Yaho, welcome to the stream. How you doing, Kozak? Mwah. Hello, Izzy. Welcome, welcome. Mwah. Butter bro, thank you for stopping by. And Izzy, Mwah. adorable little fucker, a little cute bitch, a little shit boy, a little bitch boy. You better be taking care of yourself, huh? Mwah. Having a good day, having a good night. Mwah. A little cute fucker, a little bitch. Mwah. Did you fucking remember? Mwah. A little cute fuck that I fucking love, bitch. Mwah. And I ain't never gonna stop loving you, bitch. <laughs> On that note, uh, we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna just load straight into it. We're, we're just gonna continue. Uh, we're we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna, we're gonna wig wom jump right into it. <laughs> uh, we're still so we we decided the venue and the reception slash whatever, but uh, apparently we still need to finalize like a bunch of other stuff. So we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna take care of that work on that. that that's what we're gonna do at the cross of my sanity i got world level four and get you <laughs> hey. all right um let's pick a caterer and uh bro they're kind of uh they're kind of hot what's that <laughs> d10 violence yahoo welcome to the stream this is our life which is a free uh visual novel game it's got some dlcs that you can pay for this is one of them um, but they're all like two to three dollars. It's very affordable. Um, uh, uh, where you uh, and 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 Cove, yeah, uh, gonna be our hubby. Uh, he's he's the he's the focal point of the game. Um, this is Baxter, someone that we met uh, in our uh, in our eighteen year old selves, and now we're meeting him again five years uh, five years later, like randomly out of nowhere. He happens to be our wedding coordinator now. Uh, and damn, why is everyone hot in this game? Is being ugly illegal? Yeah, yeah, yeah. In this alternate universe, um, uh, it, it was it was uh, President uh, President Nixon uh, 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 that 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 banned being ugly. All right, <laughs> and chocolate. Mwah. Yahoo! Hope you're on a great Sunday. How are you, cutie? Mwah. Welcome, welcome. All right, Cove's brightening enthusiasm was no uh, was no surprise to you. Food always excited him. And Baxter placed his hands on the arms of his chair and lightly tapped it with the tips of his fingers. In that case... That should be a nice time. I'll make sure that you find the proper service to meet your needs, but don't worry. I won't get in the way of deciding any of the details for the menu. Um, Sunday is my leg workout day. <laughs> Suffer for the Lord. Get that ass fat for Jesus, baby. Let's go. <laughs> Thanks. I appreciate that. After the rest of the session, Carl, uh, circled around finding a specific catering company. Eventually, you all agreed on one in particular, and they were able to make arrangements with you right away. The phone call you had scheduled the time to go over the details in person, which included a meeting with the chef as well. And, as an added bonus, this would all happen before your next appointment with Baxter, and it was a relief knowing that the menu would be taken care of by the next time you saw him again. Until then, there wasn't much else to do, so it was time to leave again. Thanks for your help. See you. It's my pleasure, of course. I await your next visit. We'll be back soon. Bye. Baxter nodded with a genuine smile as he watched you step out the door. Uh, once you were outside the offices, you noticed a little pep in Cove's step. You were both in good spirits, chipping away at the wedding plan details. It had a bit of a special way of doing that. Why is Baxter eyeing Cove like that? Baxter, like, flirted with both of our characters. When we first met him. I think he got a, he kind of has a soft spot. On the scheduled appointment with the caterer, you and Cove eagerly arrived at the location specified over the phone. You were led inside the building, past the seating room, and directly into a commercial kitchen. It was sleek, silver, so clean that it sparkled. That observation alleviated some worries right away. And next to you, Cove's eyes wandered over to the space with intrigue. Alongside the back wall, you spotted a woman at a sink large enough to be at an arm's length deep. She looked over her shoulder and grinned broadly. Hold on, I'll be right there. She finished washing up and swiftly crossed the room, drying her hands on her apron. When she reached you and Cove, she gave a little bow. What a Chad didn't want the cake, but the baker too? Exactly. Hi, I'm the head chef and your caterer. I hear that you're getting married and are in need of sustenance for your friends and family. Yeah, we are. Well, I can assure you that you've come to the right place. We provide a full course meal with a menu tailored to your taste and requirements. We'll also include all the plating, silverware, and glasses, but let's not get too ahead of ourselves. Why don't you introduce yourselves? A bit uh, stunned by the speediness of the chef's candor, 
Cove took the opposite approach and slowly awkwardly pointed to himself. And Susie Chan, how you doing, cutie? Welcome, welcome. Yeah, we're finishing up our life. It's a good time. Um, I'm Cove, the groom. And my name is Garnet. I'm the bride. Oh, I love it. You can call me Rhonda. Okay. Uh, hi, Rhonda. Hey, nice to meet ya. Marvelous. Now, I have a little pamphlet that I'm going to grab. You can read it, leave it on the counter, use it as a coaster. It's okay. I'm just going to explain everything myself. Anyway, think of it like an extra guy. Rhonda waved away the any idea of formality with both hands as she shrugged nonchalantly. Cove chuckled shyly, leaning towards you while she lightly jogged to the other side of the room. She scooped up two information sheets and came right back. Rhonda confidently stretched out her arm all the way to offer each of you a pamphlet. Is this a DLC? Yeah, it's the new wedding DLC. It's the final one. So we're getting married. We're setting up the details for our wedding. Both of you accepted one. Cove turned it around in his hands, inspecting it carefully. And you studied the one in your hands, too. Do you like the game? Yeah, it's been great. I'm actually really excited about the next one, too. Um, with the, I already got the demo downloaded. I just haven't played it yet. Well, now I've remembered. Uh, now that I've remembered that, we can get into the nitty gritty. Let's shop talk the menu. You can easily choose between a single menu that's consistent across the board, easy peasy, or we could do up to two separate kinds of menus based on different dietary needs. Guests could choose between them, and we'll prepare as much of both as needed. And it'll practically go without saying, but we'll be unable to accommodate individual plate changes if anything comes up. For example, a situation where just one or two people need some specific elements left out, we can work with that without needing to make a, another full selection for it. So what kind of menu did you two have in mind? Um... Hmm. Uh, one with no special requirements. There wasn't anything in particular that you felt need to uh, restrict or make any specific arrangements for. Wait, hold up. Um, hmm. Yeah, I want to do one special, one vegan, because vegan will cover vegetarian. I think that's what we're going to do. Your group of friends and family could work with whatever. And the second one that is uh, vegan. Turn it to Cove. You check to see if you had any options on the opinions on the menu. How does that sound? I'm thinking that we got a good plan going. Great. I love Cove so much. I was so sad when I finished the game because he's not real. <laughs> it's okay. He's real in our hearts. All right. That's all that matters. That's the biggie done already then. Let's keep that ball rolling. Yes, please. At the minimum, there's going to be a main entree in our service. So that's one course automatically. And if you're having cake or another dessert, that'll technically be another course for you, yes. Although that doesn't count as one of the portions that we offer here, we do go up to six portions, the dinner, as and as many as five additional portions. So we're looking at a salad, a soup, a hot appetizer, cold appetizer, and or a palate cleanser. Do you know how big you want your service to be? Oh, um... Like, a three course should be, like, plenty... Do you think so? Yeah, that sounds really good. Cove brightened, contemplating on the possible combinations with three courses. He picked up the pamphlet again. Six courses, my god! I really did want at least one of the, these of those other options. Three courses, then. Sounds like it. Do you know what you'd like for it? Oh, I'd want one of them to be a soup. Sure, I'm not going to say no to soup. Okay, well, we have an entree and a soup agreed on. Yep. The chef glanced at from a notepad, twirled her pen with her fingertips of anticipation. It's coming along nicely so far. What else were you thinking? Um. Hmm. Okay. Um. Salad course feels like we're spending a lot of money for for kind of a little bit too little. This is a dinner, and I'd like for people to feel full and happy. Um. We're gonna have a soup. We're gonna have a main course. I think rather than a palate cleanser, I want an appetizer. But going from cold to hot to hot is weird compared to just having a hot meal all the way through. I think a hot appetizer is our goal. Perfection. This will be tasty. Oh, and how much heat were you expecting for the dishes? We can keep it all very mild, or we can easily push the spice levels up. Oh, um... Hmm. What do you think, Cove? Cove met your eye, and you could tell that he was mulling over the same problem. And then you caught the light bulb moment in the way that he brightened. How about we keep the meals mild? 
and we put out sauces and stuff on the table so people can adjust food to their preference. Is that possible? I love Cove so much. He was so... Oh, uh, no, wait. I remember really that. Monster Prom 2, Monster Camp. Oh, I love Monster Prom and Monster Camp. I've got them both. They're amazing, great games. Um, is that possible? Oh, yes, of course we can do that. Uh, that's a perfect idea. Cove's suggestion made sense, but his cheeks still reddened from your compliment. And that only made your grin widen. And... The chef backtracked through her notes for a second. She thought over everything that you all had discussed until she could pin down exactly what was slipping in her mind. What about the drinks? Are we just a water please party, coffee and tea group, hard drinkers? There's at least going to be some water even if you have other options, so don't worry about that. Oh, then I'd like there to be, um, hmm. Uh, some mixed cocktails. Um, wine would be great. Uh, uh, alongside, uh, coffee and tea. That's pretty much everything that I'm thinking. And hey, what's up, brother? Welcome, welcome. Uh, area chat on my server, talking about eating food, but adding OC to the end of every food? Yo, sp spaghetti OC? <laughs> Ham bussy? <laughs> Damn, I love me some borgusi. <laughs> Then Cobe offered a suggestion. Could we have some fruit juices there too? You're right. We need juice too. Nodding in agreement, the chef wrote down the latest addition to the menu. I think we covered it. Nothing else I want to add. We'll make it happen. So that's the menu type, meal scale, spice level, and basic beverages. Please, Rhonda rolled her sleeves up, and her gaze fell on you and Cobe with a new determined gleam. Let's go deeper. A oh, whoa? <laughs> Co smiled nervously at the chef's intensity. Oh, whoa? But he didn't wilt completely. Oh, whoa? <laughs> you had the sneaking suspicion that his remaining strength came from the topic still being about food. Uh, I'm looking for a bit, doing an island event for a song. Oh, are you doing the lullaby one? Because I ended up um, I ended up getting that one off stream last night. Uh, I, I didn't even have the song. There were just other people there. <laughs> Uh, the conversation continued from there, and it dug into the specifics, such as the main protein, the side dishes, the style of cuisine and foods that we based off, so on, and so on and on. It took a fair bit of time, but eventually, a finalized selection was arranged. You couldn't exactly get over how delicious everything sounded, the longer the conversation went. And by the end, Cove appeared to be just as relieved and excited as you were for the food. But most of all, you were just so grateful to have a set menu planned for the wedding. Rhonda, however, hadn't really slowed down at all. I see that you're both settling down for a rest, but... Please, hang on and stay with me just a little bit longer. We're not done yet. Oh, is there something else? Yes, and it's called presentation. We can do all sorts of flair for your meal. Were you picturing a plain Jane approach or something a little more hoity-toity? Oh, um... Uh, I'd like it if a little bit of care was put into arrangement. Yeah, it would be kind of nice if it felt special for that day of all times. Oh, that works for us. So, as I started to talk about way back when, we'll provide the plates, the utensils, and such. Our plates are white, but they can be completely plain or have little swirly details around the edges. What do you think of that? Before you cope, could even suggest giving an answer? She held both of her hands up to stop that and stole a glance over her shoulder. Oh, wait, give me another sec. I'll grab some stats. You should see before choosing anything. Again, without leaving a window to say anything in response, Rhonda darted off deeper into the kitchen. Cove stared at her as she went, his expression deadpan. At least she's passionate about her work. You can pick the plates. <laughs> all right, all right, I'll handle it. An abrupt clattering came from the direction that she disappeared down, and a moment later, your caterer reappeared. She kept her word, and a pile of plates balanced in her hand. She stepped up to a clear counter space. Rhonda spoke cheerily, almost musically, while laying out the first set of plates and some forks to go with them, perhaps so you knew what they looked like going together. Here's the why. And... Joshua, you bought a Dami Mommy Cove Boy? Hell yeah, baby. Have you also played Nekopara Catboy Paradise? It's so cute. I actually haven't played a single Nekopara game. I think I was gifted the original, but I haven't really played it. The two of you looked silently at the collection of completely plain white dinner plates. Here's the swirl. Ooh, I like the swirl. As promised, the white plates she put down did have some swirls on them, and there was much as much that could be noted to that. Now, what are you thinking? Oh, I like the swirly one. Got it. Thanks for humoring me. 
And because you're getting the hot appetizer, of course, there's an extra piece to this puzzle. I have been meaning to play Nekopara Cat Boy. Yes. Now, what we could do is bring it out ahead of the meal and place it in front of the e uh, each guest in the seat. But that's not our only option. We could also have all the appetizers set out on a single table from the very start of the reception so guests can go over and eat as they please. Or we could even have servers walk around the room with platters of appetizers to offer to guests throughout the party as they mingle. Ooh, um... Ooh, uh... I kind of want to have servers walking around the party. But if, it, if it's food that's being delivered by servers, I would want to change it to a cold appetizer. Oh, no. Um... Fuck. And zero chat. Yahoo. Thank you for the head pat. Well, welcome to the stream. It's been a while. How are ya? And Indom, Yahoo. Hope you're doing goody. How are you, cutie? I demand that you become an official voice actor. I would love to. I don't. I just don't know how. I, I would like. I would love to try out for stuff. I don't know how if I how like like how or where to apply for things. I I I I I, 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 I that would that would be a dream come true. But like. <laughs> Mm, I think having servers walk around the party would be nice, but, um, mm. yeah, let's just have it served on the table before the entree. Mm -hmm. That would keep things straightforward. Righto, that's what we'll do. Thank you. And now you can breathe. We are done. Rhonda happily laughed as she closed her notepad and put it to the side. <laughs> uh, cool. Okay, cool. I'm glad that we've got that worked out. Thank you very much, Rhonda. Thanks so much. Oh, it's my pleasure. We're looking forward to knocking your socks off. It'll be a three-course double menu, mild meal that your guests will be talking about for years to come, I promise. Um, neat. Uh, one last quick question. I'm doing all right, thank you. Hope you're well. Hey, I'm glad to hear that. I thought I had my headphones all while blasting Naruto music because I'm speaking the whole time. We are fighting dreamer. Hanashido Kerosido fighting dreamer. <laughs> <laughs> sure thing. How do we get out of here again? Rhonda clapped her hands and let out a deep laugh. <laughs> Ko's face reddened with embarrassment. Oh, go down the hall, and take a left to another hall, then a right, and then you'll find the exit. It was so nice meeting you two. Thanks, again. And now all of China knows you are a weeb. <laughs> After that, you and Ko have left the kitchens and made it out of the building in one piece following Rhonda's instructions. You both returned to the car with a vigor in your stride. It was amazing to get such a nice meal arranged in exactly the way you both wanted it to be. The food was definitely something that you were going to be daydreaming about now until the big day. And when you arrived at the office again, Baxter was already comfortably seated and scanning over his notebook. He glanced up from it by the sound of the door opening. Hello, folks. Welcome back. What's on the menu? Baxter smirked, but Cove answered with complete earnestness. A lot of things. Delicious. Bruh. <laughs> well, okay, what is this line delivery? What's on the menu? Hello, folks. A lot of things. Delicious. This is a conversation between two human beings, beep boop. <laughs> what shall we be doing today? I got a, I did a temple in the standard banner and got Yunjin. Yo, let's go. I'm super happy because she's pretty and I really like her. I do really like Yunjin a lot, too. She's honestly... My current, uh, current next build target. Um, uh, I gotta do the Lullaby Island three times to get song. Really? Ew. At least I've done it once, despite not having the song itself. Eh? <laughs> Alright. Um, why don't we go design a cake? Baxter nodded his head, confirming that he registered your choice. Besides you, Kyle's excitement has bubbled over. I mean, we're handling food today. We might as well handle food from beginning to end. You didn't get the chest? Uh, no. I I, I, I was on Lullaby Island and I got, uh, like, the, like, I didn't have the song. Um, other people, like, cleared the thing, but I got credit for it. Um, just for being there, I guess. Um, but, so I got the Mokoko seeds. But if you play Song of Resonance, you get a chest. Oh, okay, that might be why. I didn't get a chest, because I didn't have the song. I just managed to get in and get the Mokoko seeds. 
Yeah. So I might have to do it three more times. So four times total, I guess. Uh, good idea, Gardner. I'm definitely ready to plant treats. His open enthusiasm tickled you, eliciting an adoring chuckle that slipped out. And across the table, Baxter joined you with a soft laugh of his own. Meanwhile, Cove seemed oblivious to your amusement. Um, that's how you get the island token, I think, to unlock Forest Minuet. Oh, I see. You figured he was too lost in imagining delicious cakes to notice exactly what was happening around him. What you needed now, though, was for someone else to turn those dreams into reality. The agency had worked with suppliers of all kinds, so Baxter had a list of bakeries that they recommended for weddings. You and Cove had a few personal favorites, too. Together, you reviewed the websites for all the potential bakeries. Baxter had a wealth of handy tips to what to keep in mind when you came to specifically commissioning wedding cakes and for you to take into consideration. The three of you whittled away the options until you finally settled on what you wanted. And with that decided, Baxter contacted them to arrange a meeting so that you could select the flavors and discuss design ideas before working out practicalities. Speaking of practicalities, another practical thing is how, how the slap of your ass goes great to the accompaniment of bongo drums. <laughs> you little shit, you little fucker, bongo cat cat jam to your fucking ass cheeks, you adorable little fucker, little cute bitch. I'll fucking destroy you because I fucking love you, bitch. And I ain't never gonna stop loving you. Bitch. <laughs> he easily secured a time that worked perfectly for both you and Co. Which brought you to the end of the meeting. The decision of which bakery to choose, the scheduling, briefing, your basic requirements had taken up all the remaining time you had with Baxter for the day. The three of you rose from your seats, one after another. Goodbye for today. It's been great to see you. Yeah, I can't believe the next time we see you, we'll be having our wedding cake picked out. Right, if everything goes to plan. Of course, I'm sure that you'll have a great time together. And I look forward to hearing what you decide on. Though I won't be there in person, you can always text me if you want advice during the process. Yeah, thank you. Oh, uh, I'm pretty sure Cove is going to be adopted as he joked. Cove puffed out his chest proudly. Thank you, Garnet. Mmm... He waved goodbye as you and Cove left the office for the day. The light tinkling of a bell over the door announced your arrival as you, you and Cove stepped inside, where you were immediately welcomed by a pleasant waft of sweet scents. The bakery was a delight for the senses even before you'd taken a single bite. Decked out in a pretty shade of pink, it was impossible to miss. Cove closed his eyes, inhaled deeply. There was a soft air of cakes and pastries baking in the oven tinged with warm spices like cinnamon and nutmeg. The display case was full of the daily selection of the mouth-watering delicacies, neatly lined up and ready to be taken away. The selection ranged from intricately specialty cakes to more rustic homey brownies and cupcakes. Usually those kinds of treats would be everything you needed, but today was a special visit. You were entirely focused on the even better desserts waiting for you on the horizon. You could tell Cove shared your feelings. He waited beside you with every outward appearance of patience, but you could tell that uh, his anticipation by the way he kept a close eye on the kitchen door as you waited for an employee to come greet you. This uncharacteristic restraint was a stark contrast to any other time he'd visited a bakery, where he'd have rushed over to the display case and immediately began picking out cakes to take home. As he shifted from one foot to the other, you knew that he was fighting to hold back those urges. Luckily, his self-control wasn't tested for long. Soon, the door to the kitchen swung open and a friendly-looking face emerged. Spotting you and Cove, the person smiled and began heading over. And as they approached, you saw that the name of the tag said Xavier, with a little purple button pinned to one strap of the apron with the words they, them printed in black letters. Xavier walked right up to you, gave you a welcome so warm you could have sworn they had come fresh from the oven. Hello, thanks for coming by, Zake. Is there anything I can get you? Um, hi. Uh, Cove paused, pointing first at himself and then at you as he spoke. We're Cove and Garnet. We've got an appointment here. His voice, which started out measured and even, became hushed as the thrill of what you were here about to do started to get to Cove. When he resumed speaking, it broke further still, devolving into a rushed whisper that Xavier needed to lean to catch. <laughs> it's our plan for a wedding cake. We're getting married. <laughs> uh-huh. Cove would sell for days if we skipped out on this part. Xavier's eyes lit up at the introduction. Oh, of course. 
Welcome to Garnet and uh, welcome Garnet and Cove to our bride and groom. Cove preened ever so slightly at the words, his chin jutting out with confidence. I'm Xavier, the head cake artist here. We're so happy to be working with you for such an important event. Uh, you can take some seats right there in the front and we can start talking options. They gestured to a nearby table. You and Cove obliged, taking your seats, and you sat down, your stomach somersaulted. You were really here to pick out a wedding cake. Gliding be and Lucian, thank you for the folly. I do really appreciate that. Mwah. The cake that would be served at your wedding. It hadn't sunk in before, but being invited to had begun to make it feel a lot more official. But knowing that you weren't alone in the feeling that way, uh, in feeling that way, comforted you, and you grinned at the love of your life. Cove beamed back at you. The baker had taken a detour to the back shelf where they picked up a binder before coming to stand before you at the table. I went over the info our baking assistant took when the appointment was arranged so we could dive right into things. So let's get to it. Start with the size of the cake. How big do you want it to go? We can go as big as five tiers high. Maybe. Um, two or three, maybe? Cove tilted his head to the side and he looked at you for input. Actually, would like four be okay? Yeah, definitely. He grinned conspiratorially. I'm not going to complain about having more. Seeing as you'd reached a bit of a conclusion, Xavier noted it down to the binder. <laughs> uh, tier four cake it is. They glanced up from the binder, smiling. That'll actually give us a lot to work with. In terms of decorating, is there any kind of direction you want us to aim in overall style? Cove pursed his lips, stumped a little by the question. Artistic vision had never exactly been a strong suit. Though you'd reviewed ideas for decorations and color schemes together, asking Cove to distill those visions and themes into words was doomed to fail. You took it from there and said, mm. Something beachy. Cove smiled, relieved, and expressed his approval. Right. Yeah, that's right. We can work with that for sure. Any color ranges in mind? Again, Cove fell silent, like a kid hoping to not be called in the classroom. Even though it was just the three of you and he had no chance of hiding, you could swear he was shrinking lower into his seat, as if hoping to go unnoticed. As entertaining as that was, you decided to spare Cove before he slipped under the table. You spoke up and said, Oh, um... Uh, mostly white with some pops of color. Got it. And what's one color you really, really want me to keep at the top of my mind? Um... Green. Nice, nice, I'm getting you. Xavier looked up from the binder. Right, so we're going for a tier four green cake that's beachy. You could picture the cake clearly now, just uh, what you said you wanted. Uh, how could you picture the cake clearly now? There's there's a lot of there's, there, there's a lot of ambiguity to this at the moment. Still, I feel I don't know. Yeah, that's right. Cove was staring at you like you'd saved him from a life or death situation, rather than answering a couple of simple questions at a pleasant bakery. Gave you a thumbs up. Xavier watched both of you with a smile. This cake is really shaping up. Time for the fun part. I'll be right back. They got up and made their way to the kitchen. The fun part? Cove echoed the words, puzzled but intrigued, and he peered after Xavier, trying to take a glimpse of the magic happening behind the closed doors. Craning his neck didn't grab Cove at x-ray vision, but that was just fine, in ca uh, as you weren't kept in suspense for too long. Xavier quickly returned with a large covered serving tray, and Cove gasped, his fingers curling with anticipation. Careful, coming through. They lowered the heavy platter onto the table, where it clattered against the hard surface as it settled. Xavier lifted the cover to reveal several plates of little cake slices with mounds of different frosting and fillings and flavors. Ooh. The beautiful array of colors and the breadth of the selection made for a wonderfully presented array of treats. Cove gaped, wowed by the revelation. Oh, we get to try samples? Xavier giggled at Cove's reaction, and given how much enthusiasm Cove had, you bet there weren't many previous grooms whose responses could exactly compare. You do. They pointed at the tray and began talking, to you, uh, talking you through the selection, starting with the neat little slices of the cake. So we've got a few flavors for you to try today. Vanilla, chocolate, red velvet, citrus, so on. They moved over to the frosting and fillings. There is uh, vanilla, chocolate, strawberry, maple, mocha buttercream, 
Over there, we got some chocolatey and fruit fillings, though the insides can simply contain more frosting if you'd prefer. Having talked you through the samples, they straightened up. These are some of our most popular options, but not everything. You can see all of our options on the order forms. As, uh, as they talked, they pulled out two copies of the order sheet and presented you with one each. All of the possibilities for each element of the cake were laid out before you. And that's everything. You're welcome to eat whatever parts look appealing. Or you can have everything on the platter if you've got the stomach for it. Cove's eyes sparkled with anticipation and knowing Cove, you, su you, you suspected that he intended to take Xavier up on the offer to sample everything. When you think about it, Mewtwo has a bigger thigh gap than Gardevoir. <laughs> I do remember you bringing this up yesterday, Helheim, and I do agree with you. Absolutely. Also, thicker thighs. Plump. He picked up a fork provided and began systematically working his way through the platter. He took scoops from the cake, the frosting, the filling options in turn, moving from left to right, from top to bottom. He chuckled softly, amused that your hunch was correct. Though Cove was evidently intent on eating every little bit of everything, you also noted that he was careful to at least leave a half sample of everything in case you wanted some too. Uh, you started to try everything as uh, well. It all looked delicious. Picking up a fork, you joined Cove in sampling the cakes, the frosting, the fillings up on offer. You, mu you murmured your delight to each other as you discovered a new combination and dis enjoyed the sheer variety laid out before you. Do you know why a nose can't be 12 inches long? Because then it'd be a foot. My god. You were so enraptured that you nearly forgot that you weren't alone with Cove, but this too was kind of by design. The baker stood by, approvingly, careful to not uh, do anything that might interrupt your enjoyment. You held up your fork to feed a piece to Cove. Cove spotted the poised fork in front of him, laden with cake, and you, he knew your intentions and understood as a blush spread across his cheeks. Even now, it was criminally easy to make him embarrassed. But still, he had leaned in and opened his mouth to accept the offering. You brought up the fork to his lips, and he happily treat. Mmm, thanks, Garnet. He held up his own fork where the bite he had been about to take was waiting. For you. And you le leaned in to be fed as well. Cove's eyes glittered, happy to reciprocate. You bit around his fork. The cake seemed sweeter when it was being fed to you like this. Cove shimmied in his seat. The different varieties he'd gone down very well with them. <sighs> They're all so good. He cracked a grin. Hey, could we get a tear for like every flavor? <laughs> Xavier laughed. Unfortunately, we can't, at least not in a single cake. I'm guessing that you don't want several different cakes for your wedding. Yeah, we should just go with the one. Mm. I mean, it's okay, Co. We can always get cakes for our anniversaries in the future. It'd be nice to taste the experience over again year after year, especially since you could continue to just get cakes from the same bakery that provided your wedding cake. The suggestion made him swoon for you. The promise of food and staying together was a perfect hit. Now that you and Cove were experts uh, in the bakery's cakes, it was time to figure out the details. We can do all the cake in all one flavor, top to bottom, or let you choose two different sets of different flavors. What works for you? Um, uh, I think one flavor for the entire cake just makes the most sense. Yeah, let's do that. Cove lifted himself up in the chair to briefly switch his position. He moved over from leaning forward to the tray to be shifted to be situated on the side of the chair facing So... So, what are your thoughts? You don't really need to stick to whatever, but were you thinking something plain, chocolatey, fruity, or, or what? You picked up the copy of the form to review the options again, and uh, after studying it, you carefully said, um, oh, uh, can't forget the classic, why did the bike fall over? It was too tight. <laughs> I think that if I had a wedding cake, I'd want it to be fruity and flavorful. Just like me. <laughs> okay. He rested his chin on his hands and he, as he stared thoughtfully into the distance. A smile drifted across his face as he pictured the possibilities for your cake. Then, what do you think of? Like a lemon cake with strawberry buttercream, mixed berry preserves for the inside? Oh, that sounds wonderful, actually. Cove straightened up at your words of approval, amazed that his idea had been helpful, and the baker jotted it down. I'm good with that. Cake flavors are sorted. Then your mouth-watering cake flavors were all set, and you were sure that it was going to be hit at the wedding. The inside of the cake is all great, but what's left now is the cover. How should we wrap your baby up? Do you like fondant? Maybe ganache? Cove shrugged, and you said, 
what is fondant and what is ganache? I'm gonna go. Okay, I, I've opened up the Steam browser. Yeah, no thanks. What is fondant? Um, fondant is edible icing made up of ingredients. Okay. Uh, compared to what? Um, ganache. Oh, it's a glaze icing sauce with filling for pastries made from chocolate and cream. Oh, I want the, I, I want the fondant. Um, go with ganache, fondant for whims, but fondant is pretty. I, 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 like, I agree that ganache would be more tasty. I prefer, I, I would prefer ganache. I just didn't know what the terminology for it are. Uh, fondant is used more for design. This is a wedding cake. This is a wedding cake. I need it to be pretty as well as tasty. And if so, I will take the hit. And I will take fondant. I know ganache is more tasty. I've had them both. I just didn't know what the words were. You don't want your wedding cake to be bomb ass for real, for real? I mean, we also, like... Mm, it's okay, it's okay. Our anniversary cakes will have ganache, alright? But... <laughs> Got it. Almost done. They scribbled down in that note in the binder. Finally, uh, I would say just buttercream, to be honest. I, I, I want it to be a little decorated. Cross needs to watch some cake offs. <laughs> Function over fashion possibly. No, no. I agree with you. I do. But it's different for a wedding. When you have a wedding, you still, you, like, you need more presentation. Because these, this is a one-time thing. This is a one-time thing. You need it to be memorable in every way that matters. Um, can still decorate with buttercream frosting? Of course you can. But I want the cake to be, like, extra pretty. I would want my a wedding cake to be extra pretty. I'll take a slight flavor hit for it to be extra pretty. Also, Fox Boy, my index final here. Yo, let's go. Congrats, Midnight. And, uh, I, Lurk, I'm here, uh, I'm watching some anime, but I'm here to support the wedding. Hey, Miss Maker, thanks for stopping by. Mwah. Have fun watching some anime vibe. Yeah, hang out. Let's go. Finally, what elements would you like me to include in the design in the final presentation of the cake? Uh, he wants the cake to be in the shape of Cove's Dawn, and that's only possible with fondant. Exactly. <laughs> After building, building D. Luke and using half assly using the new the event, he was underleveled and under upgraded. He was effective as Pyro, which earned his stay. Though I will be not be degrading him and tarnishing his name at every chance. Yeah, D. Luke is a very solid main DPS even now. I still genuinely think he's very competitive even now. Um, uh, it, 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 like he's never gonna stop being competitive. It's anime Batman. Um. Oh, will not stop degrading and tarnishing his name. Yeah, that's fine. Uh, finally, what elements would you like me to include in the design and the presentation of the cake? Ooh, um, like, you need a bride and groom cake topper. Um, edible pearls? The fuck? I'd like little ribbons around the tears. Um, meringue detailing. Uh, some decorations and chocolate. And icing piping. Edible pearls sound like garbage. Yeah, I don't want edible paint. Um, I already have chocolate decorations. I don't also need sugar decorations. And fresh flowers on a cake is weird to me. And that's everything. Extra fancy, huh? That works for me. Awesome. We got ourselves a cake plan. The baker's words made it official. You picked out your wedding cake. And you couldn't help but being especially thrilled about that. The wedding cake was such a vocal part of the party. It would be featured in photographs and shared amongst your family and friends. The joy of the day distilled into a beautiful confection. Just thinking about it left you breathless. He goes for the fondant but not edible paint. <laughs> I don't I don't know what edible paint is, but paint just has negative connotations for me for when it comes to uh, eating. I don't want to eat paint. It's like eating glue. Also, he says fondant weird. Yeah, probably. 
You, uh... <laughs> you glance the cove out of the corner of your eye. Damn, I can't believe Equinox shaming me for ESL, English Second Language. Can't believe this. My egg boy. Can't believe my egg boy would do this to me. <laughs> Sorry, Cross. I redeemed Bully, so I had to do it to him. Should I got some edible gold? <laughs> edible gold is a fucking scam. He was leaning forward in the seat, a rapt expression on his face. And as Xavier continued speaking, you pulled yourself back to the present. I'll take all the info you've given us and use it to think of the finished design, and I'll keep you in the loop about how it's going. Though, before you go, any dessert you want on the side? Wedding is a scam, so it works? Shit, you right. Maybe cupcakes or cookies. We could do something else if there's anything specific that you have in mind. Oh, um... Ooh, are wedding pretzels a thing? Cove roared with laughter. He struggled to rein in his amusement long enough to speak. Please tell me that's an option. <laughs> Unexpected, but not impossible. We can make you some pretzels. Cove beamed with delight. And the three of you talked over the details of your additional dessert. Xavier skillfully guided you through to determine everything from your preferences for flavor and texture to the quantity that you needed. And eventually it was all set up. Xavier reviewed their notes in the binder. So you're getting a tier 4 cake with a beachy kind of feel that's fruity. You're getting some pretzels along with it. Your heart fluttered as you imagined the cake again, and you and Co standing over it, ready to take that first cut. The side dessert beautifully complemented the cake, completing the picture perfectly. Yeah, those are our desserts. Cove bounced in his chair again, his hands clasped against the edge of his table, and his excitement was as palpable as your own. This is gonna be so good! Xavier grinned, pleased to see the two of you so happy. Thanks again for coming to us for your wedding. We'll make, sure, we'll make the dessert of your dreams. You worked through the outstanding specifics of your order with Xavier, who was determined to get everything right for your big day and had an answer for everything that you could throw at him. Got a bunch of work today, so I'm going to lurk. Good luck with stream, Mr. Streamer. A -mwah. Best of luck. Take care. Mwah. Hopefully, it doesn't take away too much of your day. Mwah. Uh, uh, once, uh, uh, once the final arrangement had been confirmed, you left the bakery, feeling confident that your wedding cake was just going to be just wonderful. Cove, naturally, shared your optimism completely. And as per, uh, as per usual, you, Cove, and Baxter met up another day for another session. A few lighthearted words were engaged as Baxter watched the two of you amusedly. Cove's mood was still shining, and Baxter could tell. So? So, I take it the cake designing went well. Like a teacher who was excited to show their latest work of crayon art to, uh, like a child who was excited to show their latest work of crayon art to the teacher, Co shared the news with pure happiness. We're getting a really big one. I'm so pleased to hear that. What shall we be doing today? Then, uh, our clothes. Wonderful. He clasped his hands together at the thought. Well. I can imagine you both look incredible. So, I recall that the two of you are intended to keep the outfits nice and secret for the special day. Does that mean that you're shopping alone, or were you thinking about extending the invitation to someone else? I want my dad to come. Sounds like something a best man should do, right? I mean... I mean, I know my mom would want to come too, but she doesn't live close, so, you know. Co shrugged weakly, and Baxter nodded with a faint quirk of humor in his expression. It'll be nice for mom to see it on actual wedding day, though. Of course. Of course. You felt for Cove, familiar with the issue yourself. You could think of a few geographically unavailable people it would have been nice to bring along as well. Teleporters would make life so much easier. Oh, but maybe you could send your mom some pictures. Cove considered it, tilting his head in thought. He wasn't completely against the idea, but didn't fully commit either. I'm not very good at that. Um, that's true. Runs to wallet and I'm gonna marry you, Cove. Opens DLC on Steam. <laughs> I swear, if I ever get married, I want a horror-themed wedding. Definitely would be marriable. Jesus, that would be interesting. I don't know how. I don't know. I don't know how I feel about that, but that'd be interesting. Um, even though it would have been nice for Cove to share the experience with his mom, you were sure that no matter what Cove wore, Ky Kyra would just be happy to see him on the big day. And it was great that he'd still be able to bring his dad. Tell him I said hi. For your own shopping adventure, you pictured how you wanted the experience to go, and then you directed your attention at Baxter, finally ready to answer his question. Um, I'll, I'm gonna go with my mom's. You welcomed your mom's help on the shopping adventure. Discord light, thank you for the folly. Uh, the trip was 
far less likely to end up with you scrutinizing yourself in a mirror when trying on 13 outfits for 15 minutes, trying to judge it and the previous dungeon options yourself. And with that decided, Baxter rubbed his hands together in satisfaction. Perfect. But before you run off onto the next outing, it would be best to choose where you're going. Do you have a preference on which store or stores you'd like to visit? There are two excellent local shops that should be able to get you both. So set up with whatever you need. And Froggy, mwah, Yaho, welcome to the stream. How you doing, cutie? Mwah. One is primarily a dress boutique, but also has some romper and skirt options. The accessory section is also mm, divine. There's also a shop that focuses on suits, pantsuits, skirt suits, and they have it. They also have all the relevant additions that you'd be likely to want. I guess. Oh, I'm gonna wear a suit, so I guess I'll need to go to the suit shop. What do you think? And what about you, Garden? Oh, I probably want the boutique. I want. I want. It's I want. Doable. I want a dress. That works. Cove nodded. Lovely. Agreement. Lovely. You make this so easy for me. Baxter sounded pleased as he reached over to for his notebook on the nearby desk. He clicked his pen, jotted something down. I'll leave the rest up to you, and I'll see you both during our next session. Good luck. His smile was curled but bright, and he waved you two both off. Thanks. Carl's voice was nervous as he started to shuffle out. You got up, following him. We appreciate you making this easy for us, too. Time passed from your meeting with your planner, and soon both you and Cove were out shopping for the a big trip. You temporarily said goodbye to your fiancé. You hugged Cove, and he squeezed you back with a big grin on his face. Have fun, Garnet. <laughs> you have fun yourself. Cove nodded, bouncing on the balls of his feet, and you could tell that he was slightly nervous, but still looking forward to the big day. Your car beeped when you unlocked it, and you climbed into the driver's seat. Cove waved you off when you left. You swung by the neighborhood, picked up your parents along the way. Mom and Ma joked about who called shotgun first and who would spread out in the back seat. It was a pleasant drive, full of light conversation. For example, you learned that there was an old rumor around Sunset Bird about finally fixing up the old park. Ma doubted it was really going to happen, especially since it had been going around the grapevine for a while, but Mom also didn't think that there would be smoke without fire. But that's getting off topic. What are you going to find today, Garnet? You mentioned a few of your ideas, and your parents listened eagerly, chattering about possible ideas for the rest of the drive. Up ahead was a very proper, fancy building, and you could tell it was going to be really nice. You entered the boutique and took in the view. Wow. The first thing you noticed was how warmly lit the shop was. Despite most of the merchandise being stark whites, the light had a soft glow. It was fanciful, like a fairy tale place where dreams would come true. The dresses had room to breathe, and each displayed like they were a treasure. In the air, there was a faint scent, and you thought it was something floral. But you also thought that something smelled like vanilla as well. And whatever it was, it was pretty and not overwhelming. Aha! Uh -huh. Fancy! Ma's eyes narrowed as she scrutinized the place. Hmm. Hmm. Yes, this should do well. And Froggy, thank you for the head pats. How you doing, cutie? Hmm. Mom chuckled as she walked further into the shop. Well, if Lonnie says it's acceptable, then we're in good shape. A woman with an official-seeming binder stepped across the floor, her high heels not clacking once. She made eye contact with you and smiled. I'm doing good. How are you? I'm doing all right. Just enjoying a little bit of our life. Vibing. Hello, is Garnet here? Oh, yes, I'm Garnet. Mm -hmm. Thank you for coming and congratulations. My name is Gabriel and I will be your stylist today. We'll do everything that we can to find your dream look for the day. She grinned brightly and gestured you to follow her and she led you over to a sitting area. One sec before you settled in, let me get a few measurements. You obliged and Gabriel took a measuring tape from her pocket and wrapped it around you. You could tell that she had a lot of practice with how efficient she was at it. Thanks so much. Now feel free to sit and we can get this going. You sat in the middle of the seats. It seemed appropriate with how the spots were arranged. You were able to get up and out easily, and that'd be helpful considering why you were here. Your mom's filled in a couple open seats, and Ma still seemed to be inspecting her surroundings while Mom beamed at you. Gabrielle flipped over her binder, tapped the laminated page with her manicured nails. To get an idea of your vision, I have a few questions for you. This will guide the selection process, and I find it makes things a little more manageable if I bring you options based on your preferences, instead you having to go over every single piece we've got. I really wouldn't want to overwhelm you. Ma smirked, but made no comment. She had supervised the boutique since you were a child and likely knew more of the, of the employees here. Uh, however, you appreciated that she was respectful of the process. 
He's mine finally. My dreams come true. I don't know how to tell my IRL boyfriend that I'm going to marry another man. <laughs> but just take it one question at a time. And remember that we can always go in for another direction later if you want. Okay. Sounds good. The stylist handed the questionnaire over to you. You skimmed over the question. It got a bit more detailed as it went. The start was fairly simple. The type of clothing you wanted out was a dress that was uh, an, a traditional shade, specifically. Mm, all right. Um, man, these are all shades of white, I guess. And Ju Chan, mwah, how are you, Ju Chan? It's been a it's been a while, actually. I hope you've been well. Welcome, welcome. Mwah, thanks so much for stopping by. How you doing? How you doing? Damn, he got a TR. I don't know. Um, uh, cream or pearl? Cream or pearl? Uh, mm. Uh, cream with what kind of garment you wanted and the desired color filled out the questioner transitions to more style based questions you went down the list picking the descriptor after descriptor that sounded best uh it has uh i i, I don't like maybe i'm just dumb but i don't I, I i don't think i've noticed you in chat for like the past couple days i don't know I, I, don't, I don't know if it's just me maybe i'm dumb but uh <laughs> And James says, Mwah. Yahoo, good morning, honey. How are you? Trying to put the D to putting a ring on Cove? Hell yeah, baby. Uh, maybe I'm just dumb. Uh, 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 I don't know. I don't know. For some reason, it feels like it's been a couple days. Um, ooh, uh, descriptor after. Did you watch the Jesus meme? Uh, I actually forgot about it. So, no, I'm sorry. <laughs> I, I like I, I I want a traditional dress with some mm, uh, textured textured sounds cool. Uh, I want it to be uh, oh ah I want it to be fitted at the top and then I want it to flow out or puff out. I think puff out is is, is nice traditional uh, laced please. Beating and laced. Ooh. Um. Uh, I kind of want a sleeveless. But long sleeved is also nice. Mm, I'll take sleeveless. Uh, floor length. Finally, you handed the uh, binder back to the stylist. Wait, hold up. We're gonna. Well, mm. if we're taking the poppy hill. That might grass stain. Uh. Knee length? No. I, I, I At least ankle length. At least ankle length. And James says, Mwah. Adorable little fucker. Little cute fish. Mwah. You better have gotten plenty of sleep, you cute fucker. Mwah. Better be taking care of yourself, huh? Getting some breakfast. Get up and get breakfast, bitch. Mwah, little cute fucker, little shit. Mwah, just fucking remember Mwah, that you might be in upside down Aussie land, but I fucking love you, bitch. Mwah, and I ain't never gonna stop loving you, bitch. <laughs> All right. Finally, you handed the ba binder back to the stylist. She ran her gaze up and down the page. Oh, I'm on it. I'll go get you something. Gabriel uh, Loki MP3. Yahoo. Welcome to the stream. Thank you for the raid. And oh, Kato. Yahoo. How you doing? Welcome. Welcome. Uh, uh, welcome, raiders. Uh, can I get a shout out for uh, for Loki? How are you guys doing? How's your day going? Welcome. Welcome. <laughs> uh, I hope you're having. I hope you guys are taking care of yourself. Welcome. How are you? I'm just playing a little bit of our life and vibing. How, how you doing? How you doing? Um, the distinct sound of the stylus heels deliberately not clacking on the floor alerted you that she was coming back. Uh, she carried a dress that seemed right out of what you picked her from the questionnaire. The right color, the right fabric, the style you indicated. Seeing all the elements put together in a single piece, the dress had a bit of a dramatic feel to it. 
That's fantastic. Oh, I think that's very much you, Garden. It's so lovely. Low-key is sus. <laughs> Absolutely, Lonnie. That's a look that's all of your own. Uh, here's your intro to VTubers, Loki. <laughs> I don't know if I'm if I'm your ideal representation of what VTuber be. All right, but welcome. <laughs> uh, what do you think, Garden? Um, ooh, this is kind of wild. It. Oh gosh. <laughs> Thank you for the 25 biddies, Loki. I gotta go, but I hope you have a great stream. Hey, you take care. Mwah. You have an amazing Sunday. And and and, and have, a have a great rest of your day, baby. You take care. Bye. Thank you so much for the raid again. I hope you I hope you have I I, I I hope you have an amazing day. And Loki, thank you for the folly. I do really appreciate that. That means a lot. Mwah. Uh and uh Elikev, thank you for the folly as well. I don't I, I don't I don't know why I don't oh, there we are. <laughs> I don't know why on the activity feed I've got the order reversed, where it says Elika follow first. So I don't know why follow uh, uh, what in that order, but hey, I love your energy. Oh goodness, hey, thank you, adoring. I do. Oh, thank you for the folly as well. Mwah. I do really appreciate it. It means a lot. Thank you, thank you, thank you. <laughs> your stylist lit up with your approval. She held the dress closer to you. Then you should put it on. The stylist walked you up to a changing room, a generously sized space with a full mirror. Closed off by heavy curtains. She hung the dress on a metal hook. Now, before I give you some privacy, would you like me to grab any accessories to complete the look? Ooh. Um. 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 Okay. Uh. An anklet? <laughs> he won't even be able to see it, but I need it. Um. <laughs> Ooh. Uh. Uh. A veil? Probably. And earrings. I feel like a veil and a tiara is overdoing it. Also, a tiara kind of feels a little fucky for a wedding to me. I'm not, I ain't royalty. Like, it's, it's weird. It's weird. <laughs> I've been doing good. I finally watched an anime that I've been putting off for a Jujutsu wa Watashi wa. Actually, I am. Um, and it's surprisingly good. How are you doing? I'm doing really good. I'm doing really good. You're just vibing. Having a good time. Tiara, tiara would be iconic, but true. Yeah, I feel like if a tiara was built into the veil... That'd be fine, but a tiara and a veil at the same time feels kind of redundant. Um, for me personally, I, th I think I think that'd be like th that'd be a little fucky. Uh, you shared your ideas with the stylist. Also, uh, although I'm not like into being overly decorative, you know, I like a couple of little details here and there. But um, I, you know, it's something to show off some sort of originality. But yeah. I feel like it depends on the wedding theme as well. Yeah, we're we're uh uh Cove uh uh the uh, Cove the the romance character option. Well, I say option, but he's the only romance character. Uh, we're doing a um um uh blah, 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 blah. Uh, we're having the wedding itself in a big poppy filled field, um like uh like like the little hill of her childhood, uh and uh, and then we're going to an aquarium to have the actual reception, um so. Yeah, ba -ba uh, 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 so yeah, I, I feel like a tiara in in these situations feels a little fucky. Um, has Norax been around in stream lately? I haven't seen them in a while. Norax uh, has been getting on a little bit later during the streams uh, uh, when they come by. So yeah, the, they they've still been around. They've still been around. Um. You shared your ideas with the stylist. And from your description, she had something in mind and left to collect what you requested. You closed the curtain after Gabrielle was gone. Uh, oh, Gabrielle. Gabrielle was gone. You told that the, you were glad that there was a space to put your clothes when you changed out of them. You slipped into the dress, and it fit well for something off the rack. Gabrielle really knew what she was doing with the sizing. You inspected yourself before you left for the dressing room. The view from the mirror was breathtaking. You truly were about to have a wedding. You slid the thick cloth partition aside and stepped back into the main floor of the shop, paused in front of another well-lit mirror, and beamed. Gabrielle walked over and accessorized you, and the look was finished. In the mirror, the day that you were planning, um, you were planning looked back at you, you and the dress that you'd wear to the ceremony, and it felt real. You were pretty content about it. Every piece was fitting together, each moment was joyful, and you nodded at your reflection, spun around to face the others. Ma hugged Mom around from the side. Oh, oh, it's amazing, honey. Mom took out a moment to recover from being bowled over from the unexpected hug, but rallied. You've never looked better, kiddo. 
You twisted around, looking back at the mirror. It was the right choice. You went back to talk with the stylist together, and she helped get you things sorted. Gabrielle took more of your measurements, discussed the shoes you'd be wearing, the boutique that they tailored to dress to you. Um, okay, asking, because it's just been a long time since I watched your streams? Hey, yeah, no worries, no worries. Um, the boutique would tailor the dress to fit you, and your shoe size, exactly. It didn't take long to wrap everything up, so you thanked Gabrielle for her help and had every belief that the next time you put on that dress, it would be one of the best days of your life. And when outside, the first thing on your mind was calling Cove to let him know that you were done. You selected Cove's name and your favorites and tapped the call button. He answered right away, voice chirpy over the phone, eager to talk to you. Garnet! Hey, Garnet! Hi! How'd it go? It went great. Another thing to check off the list. I'm so glad. Oh, it's so good. I'm glad it worked out. He sounded sweet, and a small part of you just melted. Talking to him made uh, made made you feel even happier than when you had successfully. Uh, blah, 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 blah. Talking to him had made you even happier than when you had been for than you had been for successfully finding your outfit. How are things for you? Oh, I did it too. Me and Dad kind of struggled, but it worked out. I'm pretty sure it's all good. You should like it. Oh, I can't wait for us to see each other. It's gonna be amazing. This is a surprise that I can wait for. Suddenly, the day before the wedding seemed even longer. Now, you would be in suspense. <laughs> should I say sorry now if I cry when I see you? I know it's going to be perfect. But I should probably let you go. We can see each other in person once we get back. I love you. Goodbye for now. Uh, goodbye for a little bit, Garnet. I love you. Love you too. Bye, Cove. You ended the call gleefully, tucked the phone away. Then you pulled out your keys and hurried off to find your fiancé. You also gave your appreciation to your mom for not interrupting your conversation with Ko. They had been able to sense you'd been missing him and needed that time. You parked in front of the familiar street to drop off your moms. With the car parked in front of your old house, you said your goodbyes. Thanks. Thanks for letting us come along. Hopefully we didn't crap your style too much. I'm sure we'll see you soon. You thanked them for joining you and waved until they disappeared into the house. In the car, with the scenery flying past you, you reflected on the day. And you thought back to what you had put together and felt your heart flutter. The image was crystal clear, and you could see yourself in it, and the view of your wedding day had become that much more defined in your mind. Right on time, you entered Baxter's office for your next meetup, and he was waiting there for you. So? Hello. Were you both able to find pieces you were happy with? I think so. It's gonna be wonderful. Yeah. As it should be. What shall we be doing today? Well... There's only one thing left, right? We should begin the dance session. Exciting. Oh, you want to get ex uh, started on that. Exciting. Baxter gestured to the other door in the space, rolling his wrist to point with his whole hand in an extravagant gesture. There's a room here in the building that you can use for dance lessons. I'll need to schedule it, of course. We need to be certain there won't be any conflicts. If you can wait a moment, please. He pulled up the phone and swiped his finger a few times, his brows furrowed as he checked some sort of calendar. He tapped something with a flourish and looked up with a grin. Cove watched with open antsiness. Well, Cove and I can attend lessons in the afternoon, then Garnet we can have in the evening. I believe I can pencil us in as early as tomorrow for the first session. I need to take five. The game hit me a bit. Oh, no worries. Make sure to take care of yourself, Jason. Happily, there's enough vacancy in the event room for individual sessions. One-on-one -on -one th lessons are all ideal for this. Each person is at their own level and will need guidance with different aspects. I can get everything arranged today if that works for you. Cove nodded seriously, no hesitation coming from his corner, despite his jitteriness. Let's do it. You shot Cove and Baxter. Uh, you shot Cove and Baxter a please thumbs up. Yeah, that's good. Baxter placed his phone down and clapped his hands together. His enthusiasm was hard to miss. Excellent. Excellent. I will make it happen. And as and he did. Baxter made the necessary arrangements, and right afterwards, he asked for your input and finalized the times. He planned each detail out exactly. Any specific idea that Cove or you had was jotted down and added to the consideration. What kind of music are you thinking of? 
Um, would you rather go with something fast, something slow? It doesn't need to be the ballroom staples. I'm more very than that. A recent wedding I helped with went with classical music for the first half and then early 2010s dance music for the latter half. There is no wrong way to answer this. Ko shrugged and left space for you to answer. Ooh, um... It'd be cool to have some throwbacks from when we were growing up. Um, but I would just love songs to dance to. You had already started thinking about what songs best fit Cove in your relationship. Baxter nodded approvingly, and Cove was even more supportive of your recommendation. Cool. I think I can guess... Oh, cool. I think I can guess some of the songs that you're hoping for. Absolutely. Of course. And speaking of, let's chat about the particular tracks. Absolutely. And of course, uh, of course, and speaking of, oh wait, oh, I already, I already said that. <laughs> After continuing to discuss the music selections for a while, your office time with Baxter finished and it was time to leave for the day. Goodbyes were said, knowing that the separation wouldn't last long. Tomorrow wasn't that far. The hours rolled by quickly and it felt like a blink by the time that the session rolled around. Bit after lunch, he drove Cove to his first solo dance lesson with Baxter. He was definitely nervous on the drive over there, and despite his usual anxiousness, he insisted that he wanted to do the lesson on his own, and he would show you his moves after he practiced. <laughs> you wish Cove luck and dropped him off, hoping he had a good time. He drove off soon, and as he disappeared into the building, the plan was to run some errands until it was time to pick him up. You heard about a new store that opened up recently, and it was close enough that you decided to check it out, see if they had anything worth getting. Unfortunately, the store didn't really have a good selection compared to other op options, but you stalled in the snack section. You debated on buying something in order to not leave empty-handed. So, um... You, brought, you bought some pre-portioned packs of cheese and jerky, scooping out the box of savory morsels off the shelf and brought it to check out. Another store that you uh, that you knew what have what you needed was minutes away, and a short drive later, you were on your way to finishing your errands. It was nice to keep busy while waiting for Cove. When the time came, you drove the car up to the front of the building, stopping where Cove stood on the sidewalk. Cove greeted you with a smile and hopped into the car, closing the door behind him, buckling into his seatbelt with a click. How'd it go? Cove shifted in his seat while rubbing the back of his neck. It was awkward, as you'd probably guess, but not that bad. He brightened as he thought back. You listened to the viv uh, vivacity in his voice even as you focused on driving through the parking lot. Baxter's kind of a good guy. Not a bad teacher. You pulled out in front of the building and started making your way through the first intersection. Well, what did you talk about with all your time together? To yourself, you admitted you were really curious. From what you could remember that summer years ago, Cove and Baxter never really spent time with just each other. Cove hummed and thought. We mostly focused on the dance stuff, but I think we also talked about some general wedding stuff. He asked me about the materials of napkins I liked. Nothing personal. He didn't bring up anything from back before when he wasn't our wedding planner. He paused for a moment, and then continued. It had to have been purpose. Um, I guess he didn't forget how I get uncomfortable when people acted too friendly too fast. You heard Cove tap the car door with his fingertips as you made a right turn. I... I wouldn't have minded talking a little more now, so... We kind of made more progress in more than just my coordination. A smile tugged at your lips. That was good to hear. You finally pulled into a parking space and parked the car. Couldn't linger the car too long, given your own lesson. And it was time to go. You looked at the grocery bag in the back seat with the snack you had brought. Offered some to Cove. If you're hungry, feel free to snack. You probably needed some fuel after dancing so long. You pointed over at the food, and Cove's eyes widened at the sight. Oh, that's perfect. I'll see you later. Bye. Love you. I love you too. Cove leaned over and gave you a quick kiss, and you beamed back at him. You left Cove with the car, walked over with a bounce in your step to meet up with your wedding partner and turn dance instructor. The doors of the office building let you in after a firm yank. The air was cooler than what was outside. You followed Baxter's directions from yesterday, navigated down the wide halls, a left past the fire extinguisher, a right on the first set of doors, found a thick set of glass doors, and peered into a large event room, which had to be the place. You entered the space, noticed the towers of chairs on the sides of the room. It was easy to imagine that the room filled with the crowd, but... It had been all cleared for your private class. You walked across the empty tile floor to the couch at the back where Baxter was. 
He raised his head, waved you over, setting aside some notes he'd been reading. With the paper and an elegant fountain pen on the counter, he strode forward and met you in the middle of the large room. Hello. Hello, welcome, Garnet. I'm glad you can make it. Hey. You waved at him and smiled warmly. I hope you've been well. Oh, I'm... Fantastic. Excellent. Baxter pulled a remote from his pocket, a jacket pocket, and clicked a button. A speaker system you haven't noticed crackled to life. Familiar music began to fill the room. He must have been busy to already have songs that you talked about yesterday ready. He tucked the remote back into his pocket, and then Baxter turned his attention towards you, offered you his hand. Well. I'll leave at first, at least at first. We can switch later if you prefer. His gesture felt grandly formal. He had enough performance to practice really, uh, practice to really feel as if he'd stepped out of a fairy tale ball. He took his hand, ready to get started. His fingers linked around yours, and he put his arm across your back. Your other hand hovered awkwardly in the air. You weren't exactly sure where to place it. His shoulder? His back? He noticed your confusion and directed you into the, the proper form for a slow dance. And when you were comfortable, he guided you into the steps, and you watched your feet, carefully following his lead. He was a good teacher and a reliable partner for dance, and it didn't take you long to start moving to the music, following the rhythm rather than worrying about what foot went where. Fax suddenly smirked, a twitch of his lips, getting your attention immediately. You know... Oh, you know, I recall it wasn't just dance lessons I was available for, was it? I also offered to give you rides whenever you needed them, didn't I? Hopefully, I haven't let you down with that. It took a moment before you understood what he was talking about. You laughed clear and bright. <laughs> I think it'll be alright. We've all got our own cars now. You were impressed that he still remembered, but then again, you also remembered it. It had been a particularly memorable summer all those years ago. Being firmly in the flow, the discussion died down. The only exchange was with the music and the sounds of your shoes and the sleek floor in time with each other's. Do you still dance often? No. Oh, I don't compete anymore, if that's what you mean. I haven't even kept it up as a hobby lately. I do it for weddings, if the couple would like me to assist. He gazed into the distance, somewhere for a heartbeat. Then he came back to you and smiled. I still love dance, clearly. He wiggled his eyebrows and put emphasis on his movements, and you have to admit, he seemed happy enough during the session. There just isn't room for everything. I imagine that you've dealt with similar situations in your adult life. Oh, I see. Thanks. Thanks for giving me an excuse to make some time for a dance. <laughs> uh, the feeling's mutual. You also love the excuse to dance. The session was a lot of fun. If only the world gave more excuses to dance, that would be a planet you'd love to live in. So, how did things go with Ko? Baxter chuckled as he led you to the left. You followed, watching his reaction more than your feet. Cove is a remarkably sweet man. You have nothing to worry about, in more ways than just his dancing. But I won't say anything else. Instructor Clyde Privilege. That response piqued your interest, past simple curiosity. What happened? The question was plain in your face, but Baxter suddenly focused on your heels. And with him staring downward, you paid more attention to your Perfect. Tank. Very nice. It was clear that you weren't going to get more out of him on the topic. So, why'd you never contact us again? He faltered in his step, throwing the dance to a halt. Recovered quickly, though, as his toes going back to precisely formed motions. But his face still showed the strain of the upset. I know you had to go back to college, but I never understood why that meant you couldn't ever text or anything. I... I... He took a deep breath. Tremors went through his shoulders from the effort of keeping his perfect voice. I apologize for vanishing so thoroughly. And not even attempting to keep in touch. It, it was unkind. His lips twitched, and it was closer to a grimace than anything resembling a smile, even though you thought that that was what he was attempting. I didn't think it mattered at the time to end it completely once I let Sunset Bird behind. At least, <laughs> that's what I told myself. Or rather, what I hoped would be true. I wished hard that when you and everyone there didn't see any more, that you'd never think of me again. You'd go on to live with your lives happily, and that I wouldn't factor into it. He paused again. And how did music sound so much like cold silence? Huh. That doesn't make much sense to you, I imagine. Baxter offered a one-shoulder shrug for your supposed trouble. You made a soft encouraging noise. He took another deep breath and determination sparkled in his eyes. It's the eternal story of my life. I want to be liked, but 
I can't be important. A friend for a season, a planner for a wedding. That's me. I'm not like him. Cove is a fiance. He stays, he tries. Clingy. <laughs> I think your friends and family like to joke, but I never thought so. <laughs> he didn't even care for me, but was willing to dance together to do better for, uh, to do a better job for his wedding. In life there are just some ones and there's the one. You found your one, and I'm genuinely thrilled that you did. And that he found his. All I want to do is assist in that happiness, and to not get in the way of it. <clears throat> but neither of us are here for our old relationship dynamic, that's ancient history. We don't need to get mired in the past, when the future is so bright. Bastia's tone was pointed with finality. That was as much as he would say. The pace of the dance sped up, going back to what it had been before. You actually near nearly stepped on his foot once at the sudden change. And since he was not going to discuss it anymore, you didn't attempt to try to pry for more detail. This had gotten into incredibly personal territory. Oh, uh, pa Cerno Nox. How you doing, Padoru? Hashira Sorio. How you doing? Thank you so much for the rain. I hope you had a fun stream. Hope you had some good times, good vibes. How are you? Welcome, welcome. Uh, G7, I'm sorry. <laughs> I believe you just got here. <laughs> but how you doing, baby? Mwah. Um, look, you deserve to be important too. He dropped his gaze at your words, uncomfortable with your sincerity. Doing, uh, doing good, chilling. Hey, glad to hear him, baby. He decided to not push it anymore, though. The tension slowly drained out of him. Baxter schooled his face, and for all the world, appeared like the conversation had never affected him. And he focused on your movement. The acoustics of the room were surprisingly good for dancing. The music was at a good volume, despite the tile flooring, the tapping of your steps. It didn't echo distractingly off the walls. And you both continued to dance as the song cycled through and back. Thoughts played in your mind at the surrealness of reconnecting with Baxter again after all these years without contact. I should ban them alone for their name alone, bruh. However, <laughs> that was secondary to your goal of dancing well in your upcoming wedding for the love of your life. It wouldn't be much longer until you'd be doing this with your husband. So you wanted ba Baxter to continue leading the dance. And he obliged easily. By the end of the session, night had fallen. You said goodbye to Baxter and Cove came over to pick you up in the car. Get wrecked, loser. Get in the car, loser. We're going shopping. <laughs> you mirrored his actions from early in the day. Climbing to the passenger seat. Clicking in your seatbelt. He took the opportunity to copy you as well. So, how'd it go? The amused sparkle in his eye let you know that using your words was completely and utterly un unintentional. Um, well, I'm glad I did it. You bounced in your seat, full of energy despite all the exercise you'd had. It had been a good experience, and Cove grinned widely, happy for you. I'm glad this was a good idea. Also, uh, did I thank you for buying me a snack earlier? It was good. Oh, you're welcome. Kinda hope there's some left. You craned your neck to inspect the back seat, and you saw an additional sack and Cove laughed. <laughs> Don't worry, I didn't eat anything. Uh, eat everything. I, I bought some drinks to go along with them, and I thought it'd be nice for a post-dance pickup. Cove be uh, better know how much you loved him, especially in moments like this. Seriously, what did you and Baxter talk about? You couldn't forget how Baxter phrased it all. You were just too curious. When you were together, did something happen? I don't know. He sounded truly confused, and he tried to think back, and it was apparent that nothing came to mind for him. We didn't talk about anything important. Why? He say something to you? Well, it seemed like he was implying something. The angle of Ko's eyebrows crept into concerned territory as you elaborated. Shin noodles, delicious. Yo, shin ramen is... Oh. It wasn't bad. It actually seemed good. He, he thinks you're sweet. Cole's brows pinched together. They were now approaching deep thought. I guess... Well, I'm not good at dancing. I never have been. You know that. It's hard and nerve-wracking. And I made it clear why I was going with something that I'm not cut out for. Who it was for. He showed you a soft smile and his eyebrows evened out to normal. Maybe that's what he meant. You blushed. Your eyes strained to a window. The parking lot had emptied out from early this afternoon. And it really was just you and Cove. Maybe it was. 
He felt very lucky to have such a loving fiance. With the day's arrangements taken care of, Cove pulled out of the empty lot and started to drive away. Next time you were scheduled to come by, it would be for the usual kind of office visit, no dancing required. You highly anticipated the meeting back up with Baxter, and you had a good feeling about where this wedding was going. When you arrived for your session that day, you noticed that Baxter's foot was tapping against the floor in a steady rhythm. It seemed that the lessons from the day before were still on his mind. Hey, uh, um, hi. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. So nice to see you again. And with all the work, planning, and effort being a thing of the past, you were having a final appointment with Baxter. The two of you situated yourselves in the purple couch of your normal spots, although Cove was unable to treat the visit as anything near normal. His legs had stiffened from nervousness so badly, the bend of his knees it was like the snap of two branches. He nearly fell into the cushion. Baxter, the complete opposite end of the comfort spectrum from Cove, smiled with a natural ease. Well, well, well. Well, well, well. This is the all last right, time. Oh. The <laughs> when, you, oh when you sad, always remember sad happy days. Thank um, you for the three dollars. A wild G7 appeared. <laughs> God damn it, G7. Mwah. I do really appreciate it, cutie. Mm. Um, are you feeling prepared? Um, after uh, as many meetings and appointments as we went through, yeah, definitely. Cove didn't react whatsoever, not to Baxter or you, and he was frozen solid. Baxter ran his hands alongside the inside edge of his jacket, placed his most encouraging smile on his face. To be honest. To be honest, you've both done beautifully. The well, well, well. Ah? <laughs> Your wedding will be an event to be proud of. Uh, sorry, it's just $3, bro? Hey, man, that means a lot, all right? Mwah. It's it's not it's, it's like the the money the money is important because it, uh, livelihood but like it's the thought and the meaning behind it all you know I really appreciate it. Mwah. Your wedding will be an event to be proud of, and I'll be there to make certain it flows smoothly. All you need to do now is to enjoy yourselves. Each line Baxter spoke chipped away at the frosted shell around Cove until it cracked. Your fiance replied in a small voice. Thank you. Wow. Thanks. Wow. Oh. Having broken the ice, Baxter easily shifted back to work mode. He touched the tips of his fingers to a pile of letters, uh, papers, onto his desk to the side. I've got the details for the hotel for you here. I was able to book two standard single bed rooms for you and your parties to get used to Bay Ready in. Three dollars enough to pay for it. <laughs> Damn. I didn't. I didn't know I lived in a shoebox. <laughs> no, yeah. Um, the hotel is minutes away from the ceremony venue, so you won't need to make the trip out in the morning, though. Not bad. Thanks, Baxter. You're good at this. Cove's admittance was almost embarrassed. He scratched at his cheeks and shared a look with you. You remembered how hard it was a time for the two of you to get a room when you had to come to Sunset Burr for your mom's anniversary. That was an ordeal. Cove chuckled, no, uh, knowing you were reminiscing over the same experiences. Can I explore that, Cove? You get your own, Cove. <laughs> Baxter accepted the compliment earnestly without prying. He leaned in an elbow against his chair's armrest and propped his head up against his hand. Glad to hear it. I'm glad to hear that. I do strive to be. Can I explore Cove's mom? Ayo. Hey, <laughs> he continued to relax, following up his prior motion with the crosses of his legs. And I very much appreciate your great patience with this series of questions throughout this experience. I do have yet one more topic I'd like to discuss. But when you leave here, the wedding planning is over. Do either of you have an opinion on seeing your beloved before the ceremony? Ah, uh, uh, that was not something Cove had considered. He didn't exactly have words to back up the hasty interruption, and Baxter smoothed it over by elaborating. I know some couples follow a tradition of completely cutting contact in the lead up to the wedding, so it's a reuniting when they come together for the ceremony. Others stay apart physically, though communicate over the phone, and there are those who don't participate in that whatsoever and stay with one another. This time, Cove gave himself the space to consider it, letting the concept sink in. I don't know. I mean, I didn't have any plans to be away from Garnet. You know, I, I like being around her when that's an option, but I guess maybe you could do that? It's a special thing for weddings. He laughed breathily and sent Baxter a question of his own. Are you going to make fun of me for being clingy now? Never. Never. 
You know how much Baxter meant that. Co, however, didn't have the same context. Oh, okay. Also, imagine Co and the protagonist arguing, and the protagonist going, My mom was right about you, and Co going, Which one? <laughs> <laughs> That's lucky for the both of us. I'm clingy too. In disbelief, Cove's eyes bounce back and forth between you and your planner. He was able to express his want to be always around you, and no one in the room had given him a hard time for it. And Cove absolutely beamed at that revelation. For him, it was a pre-wedding miracle. You were genuinely charmed by at his overt affection for you and about how cute he genuinely was. But you made the effort to not be entirely distracted, and you gave an answer to the question at hand. Cove, I'd like to share a room with you. Yes, definitely. Obviously. Uh, not me realizing it's already afternoon for me. Time goes by so fast. <laughs> I'm glad you asked, because, yeah, <laughs> I'm a little clingy. Cove shuffled the balls of his feet against the carpet, all while glancing over at you bashfully. And you held on to his sweet gaze, feeling grateful knowing that you wouldn't have to go without that anytime soon. Imagine the protagonist shouting mom and the raw one shouts back and they have to go know the other one. <laughs> that is admittedly why when with the protagonist, as the protagonist, you have when you have two mothers, you separate them. One is Ma, who used to be uh, who used to be uh, who used to be Mama. And then you have mom. Um, well, ma who used to be mommy. Uh, but now we also have Kyra who we're also calling mom. I kind of wish we had called her another variant of mother. Or, uh, uh, or something. But we're calling her mom too. Like our actual mom apparently. Which is a little weird. Um, imagine you bring your dad to school days. G7, no. And Malik. Mwah, Yahoo. Welcome to the street. How you doing cutie? You held on to a sweet gaze. No, oh wait, I already read that. Off to the side, Baxter watched the two of you from a spot in the office chair. The fondness in his, in his, 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 his the fondness in his expression for you and Cove had tipped past his usual professional distance, and not wanting to ruin the moment, he spoke in a soft voice. Perfect. Very good. Everything is settled then. From there, the rest of the meeting was spent over going over the final details of the whole plan, step by step. Baxter wanted to make sure that you were on the same page and prepared for the events ahead. He shared amusing antidotes of past weddings he planned, some highlighted with actual potential pitfalls you could intentionally avoid, and others that were one in a million debacles. The most unbelievable story was about a particular orchard ceremony from the year before. The stage set with flowers, a walkway seating, a wooden arch at the end. He was looking for a final survey, primed for the guests to arrive when an out-of-control truck with a back end full of apples drove straight through. The driver was unharmed when he got his truck to stop and the couple were still married, albeit in a much simpler arrangement, but Baxter does still remember the almost comedic surrealness of it. Seeing a completed wedding and having it flattened back to the ground in the blink of an eye was something he never expected or hoped to experience. Your mamas are so fat when they have sex the Big Bang happens. Oh my god. Uh, while the planner chuckled in recollection, Cove leaned over to ask if they thought there would be any reason for a fruit truck might be, uh, oh uh, wait, Cove leaned over to ask if he thought there'd be any reason a fruit truck might be, uh, might have to be at your venue, and you weren't sure that there wasn't. The stories and laughter continued until the end of the appointment. It reminded you of the final day of class before summer vacation. Technically, you were still in school, but everyone was eager for the fun to begin. Then goodbyes were exchanged as usual, and with promise to see each other soon, there had been, uh, like there had been every time you visited. However, when you left the office, you had to wonder if you would ever go back there again. When you saw Baxter next, it would be at the wedding location. Maybe you would return someday, if you and Cove decided to renew your vows and needed a planner again. Or you could just visit as friends and not as customers. Under a wide starry sky, you and Cove hopped into his car to head back, and despite having it done many times before, it felt completely different that time. After the click of seatbelts being snapped into place, there was a silence in the cab. None of the boisterousness from minutes ago had come with you. Cove's expression was pensive as he rounded the curb and got out of the car into the street. 
gentle rumble resonated over you from the wheels rolling across tarmac. It... That was the only word that he managed to articulate before his mouth clamped up tight again. He had an internal struggle, which made visible, ultimately, made enough peace with it to finally smile. <sighs> right now, I've got a lot going on in my head. You probably guessed that. At least she doesn't have... Uh, to, uh, a dad to disappoint when they marry poison ivy illegitimate what <laughs> there's so much I want to say to you about us and what's happened and all of this well, it would probably make more sense if I said it during the wedding his voice dropped a complete whisper his grip on the steering wheel intensified it's so close now Kov took in a deep breath through his nose, allowing his fingers to loosen again. That was followed by him answering his own question. Don't worry about it. Oh, don't worry about it. Pretend this didn't happen. I mean, you can say whenever you're ready, if you ever are. Thanks. You're always so nice to me. That warmed you up inside, and nothing felt better knowing that he could rely on you. But there's a lot of other things I'm thinking about, too. Like the fact that these are our last moments of our lives together and not being married. After this, I'll be your husband, and you'll be my wife. That's unbelievable. Oh, I love you, Cove. I love you, too. Twisting your seat, you let the side of your face rest against the back of the chair. You rested there at the end of such a long project, watching your almost husband as he continued to drive ahead. The two of you were moving forwards, full of hope and anticipation for the very near future. And after days, weeks, years of waiting to commit yourself to the love of your life, the morning of your wedding arrived. It was a realization that hit you as you laid in a dark hotel room. You were half asleep and just totally cozy. You're not you weren't you weren't able to tell exactly how long you were up, been, been up at that point. There'd been a lot going through your mind and being cuddled up next to Cove just really hadn't helped. His shining aquamarine eyes were open, and you wondered when he'd woken up. It could have been just then, or it might have been lost in his own imagination for himself a while. When your gazes met, you became everything he was immersed with. Your hand moved from its placement across your back to the nape of your neck and brushed past your ear against your cheek. Cove's fingers drifted over your skin warmly, gently, completely steady. They flowed like a wave from a summer sea. Of course, you'd known Cove for more than long enough to be aware that this tranquility really would not last. Once you officially got up for the day, you'd have to prepare for the ceremony. He would have inevitably become, in the most complimentary way you could think of, a panic mess. But as long as it was only you and only him hidden away under the sheets, those worries couldn't reach him. Another update on my life since I was last year, I got a new kitten. Ayo! Even though I wish it was a fox just so I could name it Cross. <laughs> it's alright, alternate universe Catboy Cross, alright? <laughs> but yo, share pics on, on, on IRL pet pictures. I would love to see pictures of the kitten. You were each other's shelter. It hadn't ceased to marvel you the way sharing a bed had become one of Ko's greatest sources of comfort after years of it being one of his biggest struggles. It was wonderful. In a soft voice, your very own soon-to-be husband finally spoke. Congratulations on your wedding. <laughs> Congratulations on your wedding. He squished his face deeper into his pillow happily. Thank you. He kissed the tip of his nose. Cove hummed sweetly, angling his face into the touch. It was a lovely moment to share, both mundane and incredibly special in its own way. But then Cove glanced past you into the distance, and he gave a deep sigh. While bringing up a hand to pull down at the skin of his cheek, he began to whisper, It's almost time. Just you wait, Fox Catboy, I want you to perform war crimes with the mice. No, 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 war crimes on the mice. That's a very different story. <laughs> and Amelie Yahoo. Welcome to the stream. How you doing, cutie? How are you? How are you? Uh, you twisted your head back, sat on the side table near the bed. Uh, uh, that was the stock standard digital clock, flashing the current hour, minute, and bright red lines. Kyle was right. You were going to have to get up if you didn't want to be late or show up to your wedding in pajamas. By the forlorn look on Ko's face, he honestly considered it before standing up in front of all your friends and family in pink striped shorts if it meant that he could have stayed. Eventually, though, his eyes let go of the clock, and his attention came to you. 
Watching you watch him had let Cove basically read your thoughts, so he bent, uh, developed a bent smile before speaking again. I'm pretty good, and you were just vibing, having a good time, chilling, enjoying um, some hour life. Please make my evident lack in English grammar more clear across. Hey, look, I'm in the same boat, and I've lived here for like 20 years. <laughs> Would it be wrong to say five more minutes today of all days? <laughs> eh, forget the, all the planning we did. Let's just stay here all day. That got a laugh from Cove, and he continued smiling. He flipped the covers up and pushed himself into a sitting position. Cove then dropped his legs off the mattress so his bare feet were against the floor. My party's gonna meet me in the other room, and you get your party get ready in this one. After making it halfway up, he stalled and stared at the ceiling, and you lifted yourself to be settled more upright. All right. Yeah. Cove's yeah wasn't directly... Cove's yeah wasn't directed at anything in particular. He was grasping at how to fill space, to buy time while he sorted his feelings. We're getting married. I'm going to marry you. The gravity of the occasion fell on Cove heavier and heavier as he vocalized it. His hands gripped the sheet, as if bracing himself from the weight. My stomach hurts. Cove. You weren't able to say another word before he jumped from the bed and sped around to the full edge of it to stand in front of you on the opposite side. But he didn't stand still, his weight shifting from his heels to the tip of his toes in unexpected rocky motion. Cove had found thoughts to share and let them out in rapid fire. I have to go. Right now. I'm getting nervous and it's gonna get worse. But I want to do this. More than anything else. While you've been prepared for this to happen, your heart still felt squeezed seeing it. Driven equally from fear and determination, Cove abandoned the bed completely, piled whatever he thought he might need into his hands, and made a single trip across the hall. His phone, charger, water bottle, suitcase, overnight bag, pairs of shoes, all of it was pressed against his chest or thrown over his shoulder. It was an impressive feat. Bye. I love you. <laughs> It'll all be okay, Cove. Cove came around the bed where you sat once more and awkwardly bent his knees down to give you a kiss. And you were careful to not n knock anything out of his grasp as you kissed him in return. He moved away with, uh, without letting himself linger on it, though he had a grin back on his face. It'll be amazing. Then your fiancé strode briskly over to the door, yanked it open, and exited the room, managing to hold everything in his arms, and himself, together. But thankfully, you wouldn't be apart for long. The room began became completely quiet in an instant after Cove's whirlwind retreat. And there was no point in lingering yourself, and you slipped out of the bed. Run, Cove, run. Boy, don't do it. It's a trap. <laughs> I'm starting to see why nobody invites me to what he's G7, no. And Amelie, you're doing pretty good? Yeah, I'm glad to hear that. Mwah. I think I, I might have already responded to that, but my, my brain is, 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 uh, is on the fritz. So I don't know. Your clothes were hanging up against the door of the small hotel closet, and you went over to check over the outfit. You gave your arms a good stretch, feeling pleased with the assessment, and everything felt perfect. From there, you went to the bathroom to brush your teeth, shower before anything else. Once clean and dry and half-dressed, you went back onto the main space of the hotel room. Your phone lit up with a new message, and you glanced at it. The wedding party had arrived, and they were in the lobby. You put your own phone down to pick up the hotel landline, and when the desk manager answered, you explained the situation, and they promised to lead the group to your room. A wedding? I've never been to one. A funeral, on the other hand? <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> the call ended simply. A short time later, a knock vibrated through the heavy front door. You answered it right away. Uh, Lee was there with a smile to greet you. The rest of the party filled in afterwards. Congrats and hellos are exchanged as they passed. It's really nice to see you. Um, you decided to have Liz do your hair. And... Um, Lee would help you with your makeup. Lee knew the arrangement would make sure it stayed on track, and you and your party got right to work, changing, primping, polishing up for the occasion. You got yourself tucked, zipped, and buttoned into your dramatic dress, where in a series of rapid, but not especially loud, knock struck the door. Only a few people would come into the room without approval, and the sound was not Co. This There wasn't definitely any of his usual notable pauses between knocks. That only left one main option, and you thought of as the uh, thought uh, you thought as your best woman went over to answer the door. There on the other side was your partner in this wedding journey, Baxter. His outfit looked like he'd reverted back to his teenage self, all black. 
but you were aware that the staff would be dressed from top to bottom in dark shades to be recognized to the guests as employees and not as possible long lost cousins twice removed. He offered his polite greetings to you and your own and the rest of the party. Hello, and a very good morning to you. Hi, good morning. He really said emo. <laughs> It's just the uh, he he's one of the he's one of the uh, he's one of the, uh, the 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 service staff effectively, except he's the planner, which makes it like kind of head of the service staff. Um, so you, 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 they have a uniform. You look incredible already, but don't fret. I won't interrupt the process for long. How are you? I'm here to check in. Is there anything you need? Uh. Mm, everything's good here. The curve of his smile pulled up ever so slightly higher. Cross-check pet pictures? Yeah, let's go. Give me a second. Oh! Oh! Oh, that's so cute! Oh, what a little cutie! Oh, she's gorgeous, Ju-chan. Mwah! Though, let me add, I also came into order to keep you informed on the wedding status. Oh? A, hel a hopeful bent came through in your voice. Yes. Yes. The status is, it's ready when you are. It should go off without a hitch. That was music to your ears. And you were so grateful Baxter had gone as, too much, uh, as, as so much effort as he had for this. And with absolute earnestness, Baxter wished you Take well. Take care. Take care, Garnet. I'll let you return to your preparation now. Bye. Oh, thanks for coming. The lighthearted mood of the wedding work was swept back with no further distractions. Um. Uh. Ma did your nails, which were pretty short. And for the paint, you went with a, um. Mmm. -hmm. French tips with a pastel color. That was specifically... Uh, pink. Baxter looks like the persona with the, the PS7 that someone people... Uh, with some, uh, that's all some people swear that they have it in this day. <laughs> Bruh. Your party was there to get you through the whole morning of preparation. There were laughs and a few tears. All happy. There was a Thanks time investment, me, and Fairy, I guess, lol, thank you for the folly. Mwah. How you doing today, Fairy? Um, however, the look did eventually come together. Your clothes, your hair, your makeup was all set to what had been planned for the day. And you glanced down at yourself, fully dressed to get married. You did a happy twirl. You stood in the center of the group, and after a moment to yourself, the rest of the group surrounded you. Oh, Lee looks gorgeous! Yo, man. I shrimp hard for Lee. Fuck, dude. You've never looked better. That's saying something. Just saying. Uh, I'm tired and I'm good, but what about you? I'm doing really good -y. Just vibing. That sentence was butchered more than a turkey at Thanksgiving. Look at Lee, though. Gorgeous. Genuinely beautiful. Like, you could tell me that this was Aphrodite, and I'd believe you. Genuinely. I, I, I believe you. <laughs> Listen, I'm not a shrimp, but yeah, no, absolutely. Genuinely, genuinely, low key Aphrodite. You're dressed to a T. Oh, look at Liz, she's gorgeous too. Oh, sis. Nice job, kiddo. Mom and Ma look good as well. You're all grown up. And then the moment had arrived, and you didn't have to wait any longer. Your wedding was about to begin, and Cove would be there when you left the room. Rapidly, you stepped out into the hallway where Cove was waiting. Cove was anxious, but the tension lessened in his shoulders in the second he saw you, having them put a pep in your stride while you both made your way to the elevator. Together, you went down to the lobby and exited through the hotel's front doors. A rental car was already standing by to bring you both to the Poppy Hill. Um, you slipped into the car with Cove. Lee and Cliff tucked in after you. Exhaling through your nose, you tried to get comfortable, but unfortunately, there was a significant lack of room in the back of the car. Knees and elbows knocked together as everyone squirmed to get settled in their seat while wearing formal clothes. 
and as the car took a slight turn, you ended up with a shoulder bumping to yours. It was kind of the wild ride equivalent to Kyra rolling down all the windows with you and Co stuck in the back. Glancing out the window, your eyebrows filled with surprise because you recognized just how far you were from the poppy hill. It would only be a few minutes until everything you've been working towards would finally come to fruition. Nothing felt real at all. Chewing at your bottom lip, you questioned if this really was a dream after all. Lee couldn't sit still. She squirmed until she eventually decided on lacing her fingers together and resting them in her lap. This is going to be incredible. It's already amazing, Garnet. I'm so glad you're here. You reached over and hugged her. Squealing, Lee hugged you back just as tightly. You were overjoyed to have her there with you. Oh, I can still remember when you started to tell me about Ko. Who would have thought that we'd be here years later? She laughed as you let go. You both sat down comfortably in your seats and your vision started to get blurry. I'm so happy for you. You just two deserve a fairy tale happily ever after. Then your father-in-law. Look at fucking Ko. Look at Ko's dad. Look at Cliff. How the fuck does he get younger with every time skip? Fucking Benjamin Button over here looking like he just turned 18. What the fuck is this? It boggles my goddamn mind. Then your father-in-law leaned forward in a seat on the other side of the car. He waved up, down over to where you at. Hey, good luck you two. Mr. Holden's smile wobbled as he saved every detail to memory. You could see the big teardrop pooling in his gaze. But you probably didn't need that, huh? He scratched at the back of his neck, glancing away sheepishly, and tried to wipe a drop away. <laughs> Thanks. I'm happy you came. Aww. Oh, I should be thanking you, Garnet. I've only ever wanted what was best for my son, and no one has ever made him as happy as you. Mr. Holden struggled to stop sniffling, but you had a hunch that the smile on his face was going to be permanent. Oh, Cove! Oh, look at him! My boy, my mans! Oh! Sharp! Oh! He's got the double he's got the double ridge piercing like me. Hey yo, let's go. Look at our boy. You felt a familiar warmth covering your hand, and with a growing smile you glanced over, already knowing that the sight of you. Cove was delicately threading his fingers between your own, his aquamarine eyes bashfully slid up, meeting yours. You wanted to wrap your fingers around that electric sensation Cove had made you feel a glow with for years and to hold it against your chest forever. And turning your hand around, you gripped him back. The corner of his mouth twitched and slightly curved, and you had a good feeling that his mind was busy with the same enormous thoughts. Baxter wasn't kidding earlier when he said that the hotel was near the ceremony. The trip was already over, and there wasn't a second to spare. Carefully, you exit the car, went forward, and finally took in the first side of your ceremony. The Poppy Hill. The quite literal backdrop of your childhood, forever nestled behind the home that you grew up in, and the place where you found a sad little wavy eyebrowed boy a few years ago years ago not not a few years ago it's been like 15 years for these characters the distant scent of the sea carried up the wind mixed with the gentle floor and fr a floral fragrance from the poppies it was a comfort you couldn't get anywhere else the hill ceremony's decorations consisted of a white arch on the crest of the hill but it didn't need anything more than that your hill was perfect the way it was you stood on the precipice of your venue alone for a moment Cove breathed in deeply as he stepped up to your aisle. Cove. Cove. Garnet. Your planner had immediately been informed of your arrival and came up to greet you right on schedule. Oh, Kyra's here too. They just haven't shown her for some reason. Good afternoon. How good to see you again. And so soon after the last time. He tilted his head in your direction casually while chuckling. Your attempt to laugh along with him came more like a strangled hiccup. Your nerves still had a bit of a complete chokehold on you. Cove's face was tight and strained. Some sounds murmured out, but nothing intelligible. Luckily, Baxter completely understood and offered a reassuring smile to you both. <sighs> then all the presence of casualness of the day left before Baxter's poise. A bright light lit up his dark eyes. Now, eye. now it's showtime. Let us get into our proper positions. The wedding parties are being led up to the front where they'll stand by, while guests are getting directed to the open places to stand in the audience area. Does that sound Garnet. all right? Sorry, I gotta pour myself a drink. Cove, please go back further with me so you can be ready for the aisle walk. 
Having the relief of Ko being there at every stage, you let yourself be led away by Baxter. Ko followed Baxter's lead as well. You went back around the bend. There was an eager hastiness to your pace. A corner was turned, separating you off from the main scene. Good luck, Garnet and Ko. I will congratulate you when it's all over. Baxter trusted you both enough to let you handle the rest and waved coyly over his shoulder as he left. You had to handle more of the arrangements behind the scenes so that you and Ko could have your spotlights. Then, it was only you and him. And despite him being there all this time, seeing him like that, completely ready to marry you, was breathtaking. Ko Holden. The last name rung especially strong in your mind because soon it would be yours too. Give me a second. I'm going to shake up some gamer steps. Ah. So the part where Assassin Co's secret life come in and crash the wedding, killing everyone inside inside of this visual novel vengeance arc. Oh no. Marriage is trash. Breaks down into the wedding with a flamethrower. <laughs> Without a word, Cove lifted his arm for you to take. His blue eyes were crystal clear. And you could see your future together, sparking within them. Seeing him like that, completely ready to marry you, was breathtaking. You wrapped your arm with his gleefully, creating a secure link. The touch coaxed for one of his precious, wobbly smiles from his face. Though he still couldn't say a word. An assistant joined only briefly enough to hand Cove the delicately crafted white poppy bouquet that you had designed him. He grasped it with his free hand, though not with it almost falling through his fingers, and he pressed it against his chest protectively. The assistant made their exit, and you let yourself enjoy the gentle perfume coming from the bouquet. It was sweet and beautiful, reminding you of Cove. You peeked at him past the petals. He was watching you too. And while waiting in the wings, footsteps, and the distant chatter of the crowd, the heavy breath of your partner, and your own heartbeat pattered in your ears. Your eyes closed as you strained to hear over the cue of the rest of the noise. But there was no need. You knew that the moment had arrived when everything in the distance went silent. You even felt as if though your heart froze in place not wanting to be the only thing to interrupt. The first note was struck. Cove's hold on you tightened into a trembling squeeze. And that's all you needed to move forward. And you began to walk forward with the love of your life. He was right there by your side. His legs were shaking too, and from the corner of your eyes you could see his cheeks were wet with heavy tears. You smiled softly, tears gathering the corners of your eyes. You watched as his mouth opened and closed as if he was speaking to you, though if he was saying actual words, they were too quiet for you to hear. The crowd was full of joyous smiles, loving glances, but no one made a move to distract you or Cove away from each other. His legs are shaking, spaghetti falling out of pockets, the usual. <laughs> the crowd was full of joyful smiles and loving glances. But no one made a move to distract you or Cove away from each other. And you wouldn't have noticed even if they had tried. All of you were aware in the entire world that the most wonderful man... Wait. Uh, da, 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 da. All of you were aware of it in the entire... Oh, wait. All of you were... All you were aware in the entire world was the wonderful man holding desperately onto your arm. And how, on one of your shared strides, his knee locked and Cove stumbled... <laughs> You rooted yourself in place, pulling up Cove to keep him from falling completely, and he leaned into you, and you both swayed to the side, but he stayed on his feet. The two of you straightened yourselves out and kept going. You were equally committed to reaching the end of the aisle. It might have not been graceful, but to you, it was beautiful. And you made it. When you arrived, you loosened your hold on one another to change positions, 
and you stood in front of him, face to face. Softly, Cove's lips parted again, and finally, you knew what time it was. Your name? Garnet! He shifted the bouquet's weight over so that he could use one hand to wipe tears away from the crinkle of your eye. He brought his head lower and closer to yours, still caressing your face even after all those tears were gone. Your tears were soothed to stop, and you pressed your forehead against his. The delicate way he held you brought so much comfort, and you were able to feel more in control of your emotions, full of love, gratefulness. You nuzzled against the one person who impacted you in such a way. A hush came over the crowd as the Justice of Peace began to speak. It was time. The ceremony's speech flowed over to you. You listened to each word, but the sentences faded out of focus the second it passed. It was like having a dream, thoughts and feelings in your own mind take far more weight than anything outside of it. What we did what did break through to you were Ko's bashful gestures, shuffling feet, quivering eyes, a palatable nervous energy that was barely swallowed down. Not one single movement went by unnoticed. And before you could completely lose yourself in Cove's gaze, your attention crystallized in an instant because the Justice of Peace had just said vows. It struck Cove as well because his knees visibly locked from underneath him. In slow motion, he began to tip backwards. You instinctively grabbed onto his wrist, pulling on his sleeves in an attempt to keep your beloved from leaning further. Numerous sets of arms rose from all around as both of your wedding parties poised to catch, uh, catch Cove if he fell their way. Cove regained control of his legs, caught himself back from anchoring back in the ball of his right foot, and he kept that firmly planted. He was still so absorbed in the moment that the notion to be embarrassed by his near faint didn't take up any space in his mind. It was as if it hadn't happened, at least for Cove. The Justice of Peace, however, lifted a brow, uh, assessing if your groom was physically capable of completing the ceremony. For all his trembling, Cove stood for, uh, stiffly, a pillar that could not be moved, and it was enough to appease your Justice of Peace before continuing. It was a simple and brief, but there was a weight to every word. Cove Holden, do you take guard at last in sickness and health? For richer or poorer, until death do you part. Cove shaking, dripping eyes stayed locked to yours. And with the confidence of a man who had been waiting his entire moment, uh, this entire moment for years, he answered with complete surety. I do. I do. It was an absolute heart. Uh, it was absolutely heart stopping. But your turn to response had come. And do you, guarded last, take Cove Holden in sickness and health, for richer or poorer? Until death do you part. I do. It's more of a statement, yeah. Cove's smile is radiant, his tears constant. You'd sincerely made him happier than anything ever had. Your best woman and Cove's best man stepped forward, each held out a small box that contained a wedding band. Cove's hand shook as he reached for the tiny treasure chest with a focused furrow to the brow. He accepted the rose gold ring. You gladly offered your hand to Cove, and he cradled it gently in one of his own. For a few seconds, all you could do was stare at your skin. Cove was still so still for a moment, but then he used his free hand to bring the band towards your fingertip. He carefully slid the ring into its proper place on your finger. Your gaze locked onto it, utterly amazed. And my god, these artists... Uh, they, okay, they're not bad at drawing hands. Let, 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 let me put let me put that on the table. But something about these hand proportions look fucking fucked. <laughs> Am I allowed to say that? Can I? Can I? <laughs> something about these hand proportions are fucked. Um. Suddenly, imagine one of us saying no, and someone in the crowd uh, crowd uh, blurting out L. <laughs> Swallowing thickly, Cove raised his hand out to you, and you held on to it in return, brushed your thumb across his palm, it was your turn. With it, you received the matching ring from its box, and it slid onto Cove's finger beautifully. He gasped from under his breath, fixating on the ring. You tenderly squeezed his hand, and Cove finally met your eyes again. His cheeks, he held you with an electrifying stare, and you were in awe of the whole moment. Then... By the power vested in me, by the state of California, I pronounce you husband and wife. You can now kiss.
make out, slobber up against one another. Tonsils. Tonsil hockey. The, the, uh, the, 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 <laughs> <laughs> uh, Coke knees might have started knocking together once more, but his gaze was nothing but eager. He threw himself to Coe's arms to kiss passionately. Waiting even a second longer was impossible. You sprang forward like a shot, tangled yourself around him. Your husband stumbled but was able to keep proper hold of you as you knew he would. Your lips connected with Coe's an urgent expression of your love for him, and he returned the kiss just as needily. The beautiful flowers of Ko's bouquet tickled against your skin as Ko's body pressed it up against you. After you, your face is shifted away from a hair's breadth from you, you could feel one fully, uh, one another fully. His expression was wholly adoring, and you could feel his warmth lingering. The crowd erupted with cheers and applause around you. Giddy, you ducked your head down towards Ko's shoulder and laughed. All around you, confetti rained down like delicate flower petals. And, uh, oh, uh, Gal uh, Galmozu, thank you for the prime! Uh, oh, that, thank you so much. Mwah, two months. I do really appreciate it. It means a lot. Thank you. Thank you. Mwah, I hope you're having a great Saturday. How are you? Saturday. Sunday. I hope you're having a great Sunday. Hold up. Time travel? What the fuck is this shit? <laughs> your smile widened and watching your friends and family excitedly throw it into the air in celebration. Peeking over at Cove, you both realized that he was barely paying any attention to the jubilance around you. Instead, his gaze was solely fixated on you. He scooped you into his arms. The corner of his mouth, uh, corner of his giggle, and uh, pulled into a bent smile, and Cove swept you off your feet. You giggled when he secured his hold on you. Beaming, you loosely wrapped your arms around his neck. His skin reddened, and you took the opportunity to rest a hand on his cheek and plant a kiss on the other one. You went down the aisle gleefully, and as you passed your friends and family, you caught several thumbs up, proud nods, cheery waves. Some were even clapping, sniffling. Your vision threatened to fill with tears after witnessing more than a handful of people dabbling their eyes with tissues. And when you briefly began to get close enough to Mr. Holden, he patted Cove on the shoulder, and despite the weepy expression, you could tell that he had the greatest pride for his son. Thank you. Your voice joined in with the noise of the celebration, and anyone that caught your attention, you cheerily yelled out your thanks. And after leaving the ceremony in the late afternoon, it was time for wedding photos. You and Cove met up with the wedding party and the photographer while the other guests headed over to your reception spot. The excursion was filled with fun and laughter, and the photographers set out to get some ideal shots. Cove loving, loving, le, 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 Cove lovingly held your face, not afraid to show his affection in front of the camera for a change. His thumb brushed lightly against your cheek, and he pressed his forehead to yours. Uh, well, now it's time for the honeymoon. Let's get it on. Ayo, honeymoon DLC. R18, baby. Let's go. <laughs> Fully animated. <laughs> his breath was warm on your skin. And you were, and you closed your eyes to relish in his love, and he pulled away, and you were speechless. But you also had a feeling that this was going to be one of the best shots of the lot. When the sun began to set about an hour later, you knew it was time to rejoin with everyone else. And so you eagerly back up into the car again to finally see the second location. Oh, the aquarium venue! You and Coves entered through the main doors and went into the reception space, and there your friends and family were patiently waiting for this moment. The room was filled with familiar cheers, whistles, and applause for your arrival. As the noise lessened, you began to hear various calls of congrats and welcome back. The love emanating from your friends and family were palpable. Baxter made his way to the center of the room and began to gesture to the people back. The rest of the staff followed his lead and made space for the crowd. And when the path ahead cleared out, you took a deep breath because it was time. The beginning note of your first dance song was played, and you heard a few of the guests speak in hushed tones, anticipation rising as the melody kicked in. It was moderately paced. Cove met your eyes as ready as he could be, and you took his hand. You heard the wine pitch of a microphone and saw Baxter smiling. And now, the couple will have the first dance. And while your legs were shaking from all the acute emotions still lingering for the ceremony, your joy from getting to dance with your husband gave you the strength to make your way to the dance floor. Possible toe scene, bruh. Cove did his best to keep up with the cadence of the track, and every so often he'd have to take a cautious glance down to make sure that he wasn't about to crush your toes. But your dance lessons were worth it. You performed beautifully and mentally said thank you to Baxter for the dance lessons, and because of that work, your dancing was perfect. And with Cove's hands now in yours, you both made your mark on the dance floor and gave the crowd a show. 
The two of you gallivanted across the floor, hearts pounding, expressions bright. Partway through the dance, the music reached its slowest part, and the dance for this section was simple, and you allowed a chance to prepare for the more complicated steps coming up. Cove took a second to speak softly to you, leaning in just close enough that you could hear him over the <sighs> This is the first moment to ourselves since we've arrived. Cove was clearly grateful for the chance to finally speak to you. You're beautiful. <laughs> uh, you blushed speechless. Rather than to find uh, words, you focused to make sure that you kept dancing correctly, and Cove flushed a light pink, rosy pink and beamed at you. You know, this kind of makes me think of the night of the Orca fundraising dinner. Cove's expression became wistful with old memories. Me too. I was thinking of that too. Wedding's normie version of an E3, my god! I remember exactly how it felt then, dancing with you years ago. I had a lot of hopes then. I wanted it to last forever, but I also desperately wanted to skip ahead so that I know what things would be like for us in the future. And now we're here. We made it. Cove sighed dreamily as he looked into your eyes. Thank god the ceremony's over and we can just be married now. <gasps> Not, not that the wedding is bad. And faux cash. Mwah. Thank you for the head pass. How you doing today, cutie? Mwah. How are you? How are you? He winced as soon as he realized how his words sounded, and he shook his head. I just kept thinking that I'd ruin something, or something terrible would happen. At this point, a truck full of apples could come through and destroy dinner, and I wouldn't care. Or a submarine, or a nuclear submarine could crash through the aquarium walls and... <laughs> declare World War Three. <laughs> At this point, a truck full of apples could come through and destroy dinner, and I wouldn't care. Uh, I'm touched that you wouldn't get depressed over missing out on a meal. He pictured him sulking, sad that he didn't get any wedding cake. Then the music reached the bridge of the song with some complex choreography, and both of you had to focus more on the dance. Majorly hungover, celebrated my best friend's birthday yesterday. Hey, yo! Tell you, tell you, oh, I, I hope you guys had an amazing birthday. Hope you guys had fun celebrating. And Tyler, Yahoo, cross not playing a scam game. <laughs> I'm finishing up, uh, finishing up our life. Yeah. Um, I can definitely spell. It's okay. It's okay. Uh, that stopped your conversation in its tracks. And the two of you became absorbed into dancing once more as the song then grew closer and closer. Uh, and G7, mwah, you have a very, very good night. Get plenty of sleep, cutie. Mwah, we'll see you later, okay? Mwah. The final note was struck, and uh, the dance ended with Cove dipping you. Cove's dip was slightly awkward due to the height difference when you were uh, between the two. Uh, he had to arch his back to get you down lower than you already were compared to him. He did make it work, though. And Cove's lips brushed over your ear. You're a really good partner. Your face felt hot, and it wasn't only from the dancing. You heard a clap that steadily transformed into wild applause, and turning to face the crowd, you looked over your friends and a family cheering. You grinned at all the encouraging faces, and it was nice to see that everyone had enjoyed the show. Cove had smiled back at you, his happiness plain for you to see, and he continued to watch you rather than switching his attention to the guests. He twisted his wedding band bashfully around his finger. And with the first dance done, you both left the open floor to join the others and properly greet your seated guests. Cove offered you his arm to take once more. You took hold of his arm, and wrapped around his, fitting us snugly together as matching pieces of a puzzle, with a hold that easily couldn't be broken. Physically and legally linked to one another, you and Cove went forward as one. After a few strides, you arrived at the nearest table with its fur arrangement, and it had close family all the way around, including your mom and mom. The two of you had scooted their chairs closer and were eagerly whispering to one another, trading words of excitement back and forth. Feeling awkward about having to interrupt, though realizing that there's no reason to feel that way, Cove cleared his throat to announce you and your presence. Hey! Hi. Snapping out of their private fervor, your parents turned to the enthusiasm, as straight to the two of you. You, re you went between them to give them two a hug from behind, and the two leaned into your shoulders, returning the embrace. After keeping the whole lawn to be warm by the shared body heat, you let go in order to stand up straight. Hello. Hello again, kiddos. Ma folded her hands together at the tabletop daintily and followed Mom with her own greeting. Welcome. It's so good to have you here at the reception now. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Of course. Of course. The ceremony was beautiful. 
You sure nailed the theming with that venue. Mm-hmm. Absolutely incredible. All the effort paid off then. Hearing people actually discuss the wedding as a real event, Cove kind of became tongue-tied. Your ma watched over the both of you, as doting as it was knowing. Have fun. Have fun greeting everyone else. We'll still be here if you need us. Lonnie's right. We can entertain ourselves while you're busy with your big day. You're the best parents anyone could have. Oh, shucks. Thanks, Garnet. Um, um, thanks again, uh, moms. Moss fingers squeezed even more tightly, a visual representation of the restraint that she was exerting to not cheer inappropriately loudly. While Ma attempted to not spook Cove after his tepid attempt to use the new title, Mom had no qualms about saying something embarrassing. Woohoo! We got upgraded! It's about time! Pam! Cove's gaze immediately dropped to his feet and his near constant flush from that day reappeared. You gave your husband a reassuring pat on the arm, proud and pleased with the braveness. Okay, bye! Cove scuttled off, needing an escape, and you gave your parents a wave as you stopped by him. Give me a second. I'm gonna open up the side door. Let a little more air flow. Ooh. Okay. Ooh. Nah, I ain't a bot. Beep boop. The username screams bot though. <laughs> Ju Chan definitely has a has has a bit of a name problem, yeah. <laughs> Good luck out there. Yours and Co's moms took their glasses and wine and hand in hand and clinked them together celebratorily. To Garnet and Co. To Garnet and Co. As matching images of each other, they slipped uh, they they slipped the drink in Gucci. They sipped. The drink in good cheer. Who dissing my boy Jewel Chat? <laughs> uh, uh, located at the ta same table were Cove's parents, and they were taking it easy until Cliff noticed you and Cove had his eyes on him. His grin ramped up to a thousand watts. Hey! Hey, it's our local celebrities of the day! Cliff folded his arms, self satisfied. The wedding's all been going to plan, I'm pretty sure, but I'll keep a watch still. If there's anything else I can do, just give me a shout. Cove brightened in a familiar way, his tone full of affection for his father. Oh, that's not what I wanted. Hi, Dad, and thanks. Hi. Oh, walked around the table, give him a hug. Yeah, yeah. Trick it to weave through the space, but you were able to get an arm's reach of Cliff, and he opened his arms wide for you and squeezed you back. Soon you had to get from behind chairs and other guests, so you had to let go of Cliff and nudge your way over to Cove again. Uh, Cliff with a tie, though. <laughs> Cliff just looks so young, it's weird. Cliff slyly winked, waving you and Cove off. Right, right. I don't have to hug you. Everyone wants to see you. Okay, see you later. Bye, Dad. Your very own dad beams with joy. Of course, of course. I don't know why I ended up with two kids, kids as good as you. Cliff surveyed his two children proudly with his chest puffed out. I have to say, well, actually, I'll say it a little later. You'll have to wait for my big speech. Here it comes. <laughs> Get ready, Garnet. Come on. Come on, sport. It's going to be great. Now, go on. Oh, I love you. I love you, too. Both of you. Then finally rounded the table's edge and reached the side where Kyra sat. She was patiently sipping at a steaming cup of coffee, placing it down when she noticed it was time for you to meet and greet the two hey. of you. Hey. Hey, Mom. Hello, babies. Yo! Look at, look at Mommy Kyra. Oh, she's... Damn. Kyra also, like, like she, Kyra's ageless. She doesn't age. She doesn't get younger like Cliff does, but Kyra's... Kyra's gorgeous. Genuinely. Hello, babies. Hello, mommy. Sorry, mommy. Sorry. <laughs> you leaned over to give her a hug as well. It took some stretching, but you were able to get uh, enough access to Kyra's face in order to give her a solid hug. And she put her arms around your shoulders gladly. You shared that affectionate touch for a moment and then shifted yourself back. Thanks. Up. Thanks for coming. It's really nice to see you. Oh, it's fantastic to be here. This has been wonderful. Also, that was a marvelous day and such an incredible way to make an entrance. And I'm impressed you found this place. Talk about the perfect lo uh, locale for my little ocean, man. I like the fit. Cove kicked the tips of his shiny shoes at nothing in particular and his shoulders shifted from si uh, side to side shyly. Cove was forever incapable of feeling, uh, seeming like a full-grown man in front of his mom. Kyra's brows bent as she looked down, uh, looked on him adoringly. 
But then she shut her eyes and brought out even more energy. See you soon. I'll see the two of you again soon. You should go explore the rest of your exquisite reception. Oh, uh, right. Yeah, we should probably do that. Bye. Bye, Mom. In her gentlest tone, Kyra cooed. Goodbye, baby. I love you. Perfect, because I love you. Then you had to continue with the next table and the seating arrangements. There were still guests waiting to see the both of you. You had a pleasant conversation with your aunt and uncle on your mom's side. They couldn't have been more pleased that you had found someone that made you as happy as Cove did. Right by them was their daughter, your cousin, as well as your older sister. They weren't throwing looks and not so subtly waiting to speak their piece, but didn't interrupt your chat with other family. But when it was officially their turns, the ladies turned down glasses of juice and put on matching, curving smiles. Cove shifted on his feet embarrassedly, and they didn't need to say anything. You went to hug them both around the sides. You were able to shimmy around the furniture to get yourself behind both, and you wrapped your arms across their backs. Lee squished against you while giggling. Liz gave a true big sibling ruffle against the top of your head. And after the embrace, you slipped out from between the two of them to head over to Cove again. We did good work, didn't we? It's nice to be uh, it's nice to like be able to relax after all the preparation. Totally. Totally. Everything went incredibly. You're both beautiful and it was touching and amazing and ah perfect. Cove laughed airily. Lee's energy levels were as high as ever. Hello to you too. Lee chimed up once more, placing a hand against her forehead, leaning against Liz for support. Aww. Oh, it's so romantic how you got married on the hill where you met. Oh, uh, I didn't know you knew about that. Only our parents were there. It's pretty common, uh, last uh, last family lore. I also know that that's where you met, and so did half of the rest of the crowd. Uh, Lee's Valley Girl material. <laughs> uh, that, uh, that, that, valley, uh, that Valley aesthetic uh, only uh, appeared in the very, very last edition of Earth. So, uh... Cove tilted his head bashfully, realizing it was probably a little dumb to not realize other people had found out about uh. that. <laughs> well, uh, that makes sense. Um, thanks for all that and everything. It was really nice to see you. Oh, Aw, you're welcome. You're welcome. Yes, you are welcome. And, like, thanks for coming to see you on your wedding tour. Bye. I love you, too. With everything at that spot properly greeted, you and your husband began to stroll along to the next one. One of the more boisterous tables had Derek, Terry, and Miranda hunched together, and they were celebrating wholeheartedly. Hi, everybody. That pleasant greeting was paired with a little wave. Your friends turned in unison after realizing that you were there. Then the trio of buddies lifted cups full of juice, and cheers to you and Co. What's up? I gotta... Congratulations. Thanks. Hi. Thanks for letting us come. Hey, congrats, you two. <laughs> you, uh, you went around the side of the table, giving each a hug. Each person waited patiently to stretch their arms to you as you came to their sides one by one. And you, uh, you received your three warm hugs and returned to Cove's side. I gotta say, what a nice event this is. This is high class. Cove shyly basked in the affection of his closest friends, sucking it up like a delicate sapling in the sunshine. Thanks, and thanks for coming. Come on. Come on, dude. I wouldn't have missed it. We had to be. Cove and Garnet are having their weddings. It's momentous. We're really enjoying the reception. Don't worry about us and go have to do important bride and groom stuff. I appreciate that. It's weird to say, but we do have important bride and groom stuff to do today. Um, it, it, precisely, we gotta fuck. Hard, like animals. <laughs> We're greeting all the guests right now. Uh-huh. We'll see you later, though. Bye. Okay. Bye. See you later. Safe travels. Enjoy yourselves. Oh, thanks for everything. And you better invite me and Cove to your wedding if you have any. Miranda and Derek awed as Terry wiped a dramatic imaginary tear from his eye. Thanks, Garnet. I just realized all of your best redeems are meme numbers. Hell yeah, baby. <laughs> Cove skipped ahead, buoyed by the brief but fun interaction, and you went right alongside with him. You took a minute to scan across the rest of the tables and the guests seated at them, 
you were able to recognize everyone who had gathered there that day, but you did note an absence. A gentle poke pushed against your shoulder. Smiling, Cove took his poking finger and used it to point out the distance. Hovering around the fringe of the venue space was a pale, miserable face dressed in all gray. To everyone else, it might have been a sight that would turn you cold, a harbinger of misfortune. But for Cove, the little rain cloud brought a warmth to his heart. He came. He didn't have to look long until Jeremy happened to glance your way. Eye contact made across the floor. Jeremy visibly sighed, making enough of a show of it to tell you from afar, then he briskly walked forward. What the fuck? What happened? Did he get pink eye? What's happening? <laughs> Look at that short grape. Yeah. He stopped only when he uh, stopped only when he solidly placed his feet right in front of you and Cove. Happy wedding, you insane people. Why did you invite me to this? Cause I wanted you here. Thanks for coming. He snorted through his nose, adding an uncomfortable huff for good measure. He held out a hand to shake. Jeremy hunched his shoulders and dipped his knees down, closing up like a clam, but then one limp arm did extend out to take your hand. His fingers merely pinched at yours, and he gave a meek half-shake. That was enough in his mind, and he fully retracted the arm afterwards. Cove watched the interaction joyfully. There would always be a spot in Cove's life for the difficult man in front of him. Thanks so much for coming. Wouldn't have been the same without you. True. It would have been better. Well, it's nice of you to want to come share in the suffering. Misery loves company. He was sarcastic, but it was more playful than dismissive. Is Pran doing well? How's your girlfriend doing? She's as delusional and pushy as ever. I just don't know what's more absurd, the two of you keeping in touch with someone who only knows, uh, someone that they only know of the pain that they had to randomly interact with, or her for not dumping me after all these years. Why don't people go away? Why do they keep sticking around me? Maybe because you're not as unlovable as you think. Jeremy made another sound that wasn't quite a sigh that time, more of a disbelieving puff. Maybe people have worse taste than even I gave them credit for. But anyways, she's doing groovy. Don't worry about her. How's Pran? That was a rare subject that could rod, draw Jeremy's very limited soft side, and he smiled without sarcasm. He actually is. It's better every day since we graduated. He's a nicer guy than me again. That's so great. You got, ever gonna let us see a picture or something? Maybe put him on a call with you? No. He thinks it's funny that you've only ever heard of him secondhand. Aww. But he did say congratulations for getting married to the strange people and in a completely different town who won't leave me alone. Thanks, Pran. Yeah. Tell, tell him thanks for us. The delicate sweetness he showed dried up and he was finished being caring. Whatever. How are classes going? They're paid. But it's indefinitely better than high school. You should come visit more often. He smirked teasingly. I hope that won't end up happening, but I've never been lucky. Plot twist, Jeremy's an evil scientist wanting to destroy the world. <laughs> the funny thing is Jeremy looks more like Baxter than before. Like he 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 looks like he looks like he, he, he his outfit looks like what Baxter might have worn. <laughs> it, before before the uh, before the most recent time skip. He crossed his arms as he drifted over to the scene, searching for something. In a low mumble, he changed the subject. I guess this is one of the better functions I uh, have had to attend. As I approached to Jeremy's murmur, Cove shouted. You're saying something nice about our wedding? That I left Cove flabbergasted, but Jeremy kept his lukewarm stance. It's not earth shattering. I appreciate that, Jeremy. Jeremy sunk into himself again. This time he brought flushed cheeks with him. Ah, oh, look at him blush! This fucking little grape. <laughs> He's like a raspberry, all tart and sour on the outside, but sweetness as you chew. And that was enough socializing for one event. Apparently, Jeremy gave a slight nod to count his goodbye and simply wandered over to the drink bar. Cove's excitement from the encounter lingered as he watched Jeremy until he completely disappeared. Well, that could have been worse. Uh, I'm glad we invited him, and I'm glad he came. Cove lifted his shoulders and cheerily, but the smile on his face was content. It was what it was. Table to table, he continued to greet each attendee of your wedding. From family who flew in from Hawaii to be there, from those who live right by your place, 
family who flew for Hawaii. Damn, I didn't know we were related to Yaga and Oki. What the fuck? <laughs> you appreciated everyone who took time to come celebrate this day. And, uh, Kinyan, Annyeong, how you doing? Welcome, welcome. Annyeonghaseyo. Ono otteke habu imusunika. Chari sasayo. Okay, otteke habu. How are you? Welcome, welcome. Yaho. There was so much love to go around. Every conversation was just as enjoyable as the last. The one person you hadn't seen during your rounds made himself known when Baxter's voice echoed out through the space, amplified by a microphone. Good evening. Thank you all for attending the wedding of Garnet and Cove Holden. Uh, did something happen to the Discord or something? I mean the other one. Uh, my original Discord account got hacked. Which, uh, was the server owner. And, uh, despite all my attempts, we couldn't get the account back. All we could do was get it shut down. So we had to make up, we had to make a new server and a bunch of other shit. It is what it is. Exciting. Now begin the bouquet toss. A smattering of applause and light murmurs followed the announcement, and Baxter let that settle before continuing. Cove, Garnet, please come to the open area in the center. Anyone who wants to play can. You and your husband eagerly obliged to start the tradition, going over to stand alone on the cleared floor, but it wasn't for long. Lee hopped out of her seat right away, taking Liz by the arm to bring her along for the ride. Your sister wasn't as impossibly excited as your cousin, but she was intrigued. Miranda rose to her feet as well, and her boyfriend popping her up to win the whole thing over. She giggled bashfully and waved at Terry while waiting in the forming crowd. Derek decides to get on things as well, grinning amusedly amongst the rest of the players. Jeremy was standing, but watched from a great distance, much, very much not close enough to be considered a part of the crowd. Kyra looked down at the group, taking a second to consider it, but ultimately she became another member of the game. She strolled into the collection of younger folks and called out for Cliff to come join come her. Come on! Come on! Don't be such a snore! She shook his head, sinking lower into the chair. Lee, Miranda, Kyra, and Liz all began to wave and jump, encouraging Cliff. Terry spoke up from the next table over. You can do it, man. Right, right. All right, all right. He used the edge of the table to push out of his chair and stood up. The ladies cheered as Cliff strode towards the crowd. Your moms giggled, leaned closer together, and whispered amongst one another. They were eager to be the uh, eager to be audience members to the spectacle. And when no one else motioned to join, Baxter kept things moving. Thank you for grouping up in a timely manner. We've got a wonderful crowd for this. Now, keep your eyes on Cove, as he'll be tossing the bouquet in only a moment. Cove, all you need to do is look the other way and throw the bouquet at the waiting audience. Garnet can stand by. As instructed, Cove turned his back to the crowd. You took your place in front of your husband. His shoulders were drawn, his grip on the base tight. The room became silent as he wound up for the toss, and he paused. You can do it, Cove. You don't need too much power. They're right behind you. With an airy chuckle, Cove set the bouquet into the fl uh, itself into the air, using your encouragement as a guide. A flurry of heel clattering, jewelry clinking, and lighthearted yells burst into the space. The bouquet would land in seconds, and the crowd was vying for that prize. The clamor rapidly reached its peak volume at everyone in the crowd, either gasping or cheering. The game came to an end. You took one step to the side and leaned over to try and get a glimpse past Cove's large frame, wanting to know what the results were. And... Your cousin was quite literally jumping with joy, holding a bouquet up in her hand. Hey, yo, the queen! I did it! Woo! Your planet took the mic again to make the results official. Bravo. Study work by our winner, Lee. Woo! Nice catch! Congrats on your future wedding! There was a laugh all around. Your guests were in good sports. As ever, Baxter was able to manage the flow of the day on your behalf, and he took the mic and addressed the assembly crowd, his clear voice resonating through every speaker. Now, could everyone please return to the seating area for our next event? The couple has arranged a special dance between themselves and the parents of the bride and groom. Your eyes met Cove's aquamarine ones, and you instinctively glanced towards each other. Your expressions brightened as you stepped apart, ready for the event. Cove's parents came over. Kyra was clearly excited, hurrying to join you, while Cliff loitered bashfully a half-step behind her. And once they were beside you, Cliff held out his arm. You accepted, slipping your hand through as you offered your other arm to Kyra, and she took it immediately. The three of you kept the spot in the center of the dance space at the each of the reception area, and in position and ready for the music to start, you had a chance to really notice their expressions. Both of them looked proud, but you could tell that there were hints of tears threatening to fall. And as the music began, Cliff released you so that Kyra could have the first dance. You flowed and swayed along to the tune. Kyra spoke up gently, her words only audible to you. I really am grateful that we were able to meet. You're an amazing person, Garnet. You smiled at her at a loss for how to respond to such sweet praise. But soon it was Cliff's turn, and Kyra handed you off to him. 
and Ayato. Yahoo. Welcome to the stream, cutie. How are you? And the two of you got into the swing of things together. And once you had fallen into an easy rhythm, he had his own thoughts to share. I know I relied on you a lot over the years. That was one way of putting it. You smiled wryly, tempted to tease him, but decided to let him keep going with that challenge. And with everything we've been through together, it made it feel like we were kind of a team. So, well, I'm just trying to say that I'm glad you're officially part of the family. The unexpected compliment struck you like a bullet to your heart, and choked up, you only nodded by way of response, but you could tell the clip got the message, by the way. He beamed at you. You truly did love both of Code's parents, and it meant a lot to you that they were able to be there on this day. And as you turned on the dance floor, you caught sight of Cove dancing hand in hand with your parents. Cove's bride were furrowed in concentration as he very carefully took each step, and despite his obvious nerves, your moms were elated and seemed to encourage him, and the sound of it cheered you as you moved back towards Cliff and Kyra. Cliff made to bow out at that point, intending to make way for you to dance with Kyra again, but she had other plans. She grabbed his hand and yours, and you danced together as a group. After a little while, she released Cliff's hand, and you danced with her once again for a uh, one-on-one -on -one again. And before long, you swapped back to dancing with Cliff, took turns dancing with both of them individually, as well as dancing as a group, changing it up so often so no one was left in the cold out for too long. But eventually, the song came to an end, bringing the dance to a close, and Cliff clapped you on the back. That was a heck of a time. Kyra, who hadn't released you once during the music had finished, had still had one arm hooked around you and clutching your wrist with her other hand. She nodded fervently. Yeah! Absolutely, this has been a marvelous evening. You grinned at them, relieved and delighted that they were enjoying themselves. The day might be about you and Co, but it was also about your families coming together, and their approval meant a lot to you. Thanks. Co, flanked by your moms on either side, came to rejoin you. Their spirits were high, and no doubt that they'd enjoyed themselves just as much as you and Co's parents had done, though Co still looked a little flustered. You're good. And that was wonderful. Bravo. Baxter's voice rang out through the speakers once more. We're now opening up the dance floor, and you're all warmly invited to come up and join the family for dancing. And with that announcement, the love songs got turned up, enticing people to come forward and enjoy themselves. The dance floor bustled with more and more attendees, and over in the seating area, family and friends were catching up over the animated conversations. Satisfied that people were having a good time, you decided to uh, uh, stand by to watch a bit of the dancing. Though you didn't feel like joining in, you stuck around nearby and had a great time seeing the moves that unfolded. You're amused to uh, watch Liz and Derek share a light-hearted dance. You wish that there was a way to send a shot of uh, the moment back in time to your sister, who had once thought of herself far too grown up for you and your little friends. Elsewhere, you spotted Lee, Miranda, and Terry dancing in a cluster, and the three of them were in their own little world, losing themselves to the music like kids in a bouncy house. The end of one song and beginning of another brought a new people to the floor as the others departed. And your little show started all over again. The merrymaking continued right up until it was time for the dinner to be served. All the action was to help them work up an appetite as the guests complied readily. They quickly filled back to the tables ready for a delicious meal as soon as it was announced. You settled right into your seat at the head table. Cove sat up in his own chair excitedly, reaching over for the napkin, wrapped in some silver in preparation, and he was ready for dinner. A waitress clad in black from top to bottom came to st uh, step across from you with a frosty pitcher of water in her hand. While sitting, uh, setting that side, uh, on a spot at the table between you and Cove, she spoke out in a friendly tone. Can I get you anything else to drink? Could I have some more juice, please? Mm. It'd be nice to have one of our mixed cocktail options. I've got it. I'll get that right to you. You both thanked her as she spun around her heels and made a beeline for the drink counter. At the same time, more servants began pouring into the space, coming to the opposite direction. They were spreading out between the tables, collecting orders from the rest of the guests. One of the darkly dressed figures stood out from the rest of you. With perfect poise and not a hair out of place, Baxter stood on the sidelines, supervising the process well into his work. Servers ebbed and flowed between the tables as drinks were provided and each individual who requested one. That wasn't where it stopped, though. Soups and other appetizers were carted up for the main course. Cove took in a satisfied inhalation of the steam coming up from the soup, and you could catch a whiff of the scent yourself, savory and rich. He scooped up spoonful and dug right in, and the rest of the guests followed, taking the first taste of what you had to offer them. Spirited discussions were had between bites, and there were plenty of compliments. Your mom, Miranda, and Liz seemed especially pleased at how it came out. They were chatting at each other at the table about the subtle flavors. And many of your attendants made use of the extra spice that had been made available. Cliff, Kyra, Ma, Terry, uh, Terry and Derek, and your own very lovely uh, husband each added their own levels of added heat for your meal. You also added a moderate amount of spice. It was delicious and exactly the way you'd wanted. Mom's jovial tone carried itself above the rest of the voices. So, how much are we getting here? 
There's already, there's, there's all this already and the meal hasn't even shown up. I'm gonna lose track keeping count. Oh, I asked. It's a three course meal, not counting dessert. Nice. When the bowls were polished clean, the servers began to reappear, clearing the dishes away to make room for more. The main course was ready and the guests were ready for it. You and Cove had the dish plates in front of you. Cove shifted back and forth, even letting out an excited squeak. And when the rest of the plates were brought out, you could pick out ooh and ah about how amazing it looked and the generous portion sizes. You even heard mentions of the swirl the di uh, dishes by some discerning guests. Very few words were spoken as the dinner truly began. Everyone became fully immersed in their food. It was quite the hit. Guests were given time to enjoy their meals while they were fresh before the reception events continued as you had planned. Baxter strolled up to the side counter on the opposite end of the head table and you had a perfect view of it. Casually, he took up the microphone that he used throughout the rest of the event to make another announcement. Good evening. From the staff and I, I'd like to thank you all for being such lovely guests to serve. We hope you've enjoyed your dinner. Now? Now, this mic will be left open for a time to allow anyone who wishes to make a speech about the couple. You are all welcome to come and share memories, words of congratulations, and or your appreciation for Garnet and Cove Holden, if you feel comfortable doing so. He didn't hog the mic any longer than necessary, placing it back down on the center of the stand as soon as his brief message had been made clear. Baxter directed a soft smile down to you and Co. as he left the space open for others to speak. A nervous rhythm began to play out next to you as Co.'s fingers were drummed against the edge of the table. He watched a furrow grow deeper into his brows and he was preparing himself for whatever was about to be said. There would likely be some friendly teasing and almost certainly he was going to get emotional again. And once the mic was available, the first, pl the, the, uh, the first person to stand was your ma. She hopped right up and made her claim over to the front table. Softly, she spoke across the space directly to you and Co. and her words carried through the air to where you sat. Congratulations once more to my wonderful children. This wedding feels like a dream, as much as my own did when I was around your age. Her head tilted to the side, towards the other guests, and began a formal speech. Well? Our garnet has been a joy to our family's lives and everyone else who's met her. Since the day we were brought together, but by watching how far she's grown with Cove has been special. The way Garnet treasured the little stuffed dolphin keychain Cove got for her, even using it as her cell phone charm as soon as she got one. Cove's nervousness over attending a formal party, but doing it anyway because it was with Garnet. There was one long weekend where Cove came day after day to uh, take Garnet on charming trips for no special reason at all. Her eyelids arrested closed as she let out a sentimental sigh. When Garnet walked through her door at only 18 to announce that she had proposed to her beloved Cove on the Poppy Hill, I thought Pam would faint, and maybe Liz too. But she knew what she was doing, and I believed her then. And I could keep going, there are just honestly so many memories. Garnet can clear the tears from his eyes better than everyone else, and when she wasn't the one causing them. Happy tears, of course, it was beautiful, and it still is. Her tender gaze shifted to the two of you once more, signaling the end of our talk had arrived. I love you. I can only hope that you'll be able to continue growing together for many more years to come. I love you both very much. Your husband's eyes had already begun misting. After knowing her for all this time, Cove developed a deep affection for Ma. Hearing that she cherished those important memories the same way as you did, he, uh, and, the, and the way you and he did had an impact. She slipped the mic into its proper place, brushed out her bangs, and walked back to her seat again on light steps. Your mom brushed down her dress as she stood on her feet and began to walk. This was her chance to take the stage, and she was going for it. When she was, when she put one hand on the mic, the tip of her finger tapped against the top of it doing a sound test. The puff of sound echoed, and your mom was satisfied with that. She lifted her head high, facing the crowd, and smiling merrily. Thank you. Thanks for everyone coming today, and for all the gifts that you brought. I don't know how we're going to pack that all up and take it to their place, but we'll, we'll make it work. I'm back. I ate breakfast. Hey, I hope you had some good brekkie. Where there's a will, there's a way. She had to lower the mic a bit, already snickering under her breath. <laughs> well, Garden and Cove, our families went through a ride with you two being brought together. Talk about a force of nature. You were tied to the hip as soon as you met, and have been ever since. And Cliff almost had a heart attack when we all take that RV out and Cove disappear from his sleeping bag in the morning. And it turns out he snuck into the loft with Garnet. Grinning from ear in ear, lost in those old memories, she shook her head. Mm. Curry? Yo, curry pog. But at the end of it all, I think you were both good influences on each other. Or at least you made one another very happy, and that's good enough in my mind. You really took to that uh, promise when you were 13 to treat Garnet well enough to heart, huh, Ko? Thanks. Ko smacked the hand to his cheek automatically. It didn't do anything to hide the color burning on his face. 
and you know we really did need a son to round things out mom snorted and let, with a laugh of her own and she waved that with her way with a free hand wanting to be much more serious when she could muster the even tone that she'd been aiming for your mom finished her speech. love you i love you kiddo and it's true that you're hardworking adults now but don't you ever forget that your ma and i are here if you ever need something your family will always be there she had been able to coax out some chuckles from Cove throughout. He was mostly amused about her penchant for jokes when the actual jokes themselves, but the laughter had been shaky with emotion. He really had come to love your mom. With quite a pleased grin, mom left the mic behind to return to her slot right by her wife. Smooth as silk, Liz rose from her seat and glided across the floor to the speaker stand. But Liz took her time before saying anything, evening, evening out a bang, clearing her throat, fiddling with the angle of the mic when she did take a hold of it. She didn't have a care in the world. That couldn't be said for everyone. Cove tensed in a, uh, apprehension of whatever she was going to say, and he had to know what she was planning. Luckily for him, though, she did eventually begin her speech and end his suspense. As I'm like sure many of you know, I'm Garnet's older sister. So, uh, one of the very few people who have been longer uh, around her long- Even- Wait, 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 wait. So, one of the very few people who have, like, been around her for longer than her husband. She was smirking already, two sentences in. We're pretty close, is the thing. She flicked the hand of the mic with some non-committal half shrug. But honestly, like Garnet, if I realized I'd you'd be marrying that new kid back when I was ten, I might have had to disown you. Uh... A scrawny, grumpy boy who didn't even know how to p play pretend, right? Certainly not. Even if I like joke, did joke about it happening. Hey, Cove gasped indignantly that she would say such things, but thing began. Uh, but things being said continued on regardless of his objection. And yet here we are at your wedding to that very like little crybaby. Unreal. This is unbelievable. Exasperated at Eliza's angle for a congratulations speech, Cove slunk lower in a seat, took his drink in both hands, and sipped at the juice like a furious elementary school kid. Her head clear slowly shook, the ends of her eyebrows bent, and a less crooked smile came to her face, and the tone wasn't silly anymore. Oh shit. But with that, like, out of the way, what I wanted to say now is you made the right choice. He's the one for you. Day after day, week after week, year after year, Cove was there, even more than I was, like, a lot of the time. And don't get your hopes up about this meeting, I'm done teasing about it. But for today, I want to thank you, Cove. Those big, watery eyes of yours have never lost sight of Garnet since she, like, caught them. Thank you. It brings peace to my heart to know that there's like another person out there who cares for her as deeply as she deserves to be. Oh. He didn't have another comment then. Liz, uh, Liz's grin widened as if she knew exactly the reaction she'd been getting. Congratulations to like my old baby sister and my new like baby brother. Love you. With that, she tilted the mic towards the two of you as if she was toasting a glass. And at that very last moment, Liz had made Cove smile and his white eyes were as damp as she had described. Liz daintily left the microphone back where it belonged, returned to her chair, fully satisfied. There was a clattering of silverware and dishes as Lee sprung out from her table. She skipped away, not paying any mind to that, too impatient at a chance to talk. Somehow it reminded you of all those times you chatted over the phone, the fun and exciting, uh, the fun and excitement of sharing what was going, even when you weren't right next to each other. She took the mic in her hand, projecting plenty of stage friends and opening in front of an audience. My cousin Garnet and I are the same age and got to grow up together. Because of that, I've gotten to the joy of watching the story of her and her next door neighbor co. <laughs> they were totally just friends, first of all, but when the romance finally happened, I was invested in the twists and turns of the tale. So let's just say I wasn't caught off guard when I heard that Garnet proposed it. She giggled with as much joy as when she first found out the big news. This couldn't have ended much better. I'm your biggest fan. But as happy as I am about all your adventures in love and marriage, the best part about it has been my own relationship with the two of you. Leandra took a moment to slow down and express her thoughts with complete honesty. Garnet, you are amongst my closest family and my very best friends. And Cove, you're not just my cousin's husband. You're my friend too, and my family just, just the same. Congrats on your stunning future together. I love the both of you. Aww. Cove had to bite his lip to keep it from wobbling. The earnestness truly touched him. Her high energy attitude returned, though Lee dropped the mic down and blew a couple kisses your way before she switched back to her seat. 
Derek came out of the seating area to give his own talk, and he had a relaxed stance when he grabbed the mic and waved over to the head table. Congrats. Hey, congrats to you again, Garden and Cove. You found your other halves, and well, anyone can see it. You're good for each other. You're good for... You're good to each other. When, whether you got married or not, no one would have questioned that commitment. Although it's been, <laughs> it's been a hell of an event, too. The first lines of the speech were for you and Cove, but Derek then turned to address the rest of the crowd. One time, when we were barely teenagers, we went to the mall and there were these wind chimes that Cove was eyeballing, but wouldn't get. And then Garda got him one. Oh, man. And Cove still has it. Now that's impressive. <laughs> Your jaw dropped, and you never realized that Derek had noticed any of that. You snuck a glance at Cove, and he was sending you the same kind of side-eyed look of shock. The two of you sat there, having to accept that you weren't just subtle with your affection as you had assumed, and Derek had been pretty polite about it. Derek beamed with a boy's charm, looking just like he did the first time you met him. Hey, thanks for being my friend. Honestly, it's it's been a pleasure to know you two. Derek's heartfelt appreciation had to awkwardly be interrupted with one quick addendum. Oh, but I'm not going anywhere. I'm getting that time management thing under control. He took the chuckles from the crowd in good stride and wrapped things up for Thank real. you. Thank you for letting me talk. Carefully, Derek hooked the microphone back to its stand, and when he let go, he hovered his hands nearby for a second to catch it if it fell. When he was sure it was all well, he nodded confidently and lightly jogged to his seat. Cole watched the entire exit with a smile growing larger and larger on his face. A beat passed and Miranda stood. She gripped at the front of her flowing dress, pulling it from the ground, and as she headed over to the mic, her shoulders were shyly hunched and her head was low. If she wasn't surrounded by tables full of people watching, you might have thought that she was sneaking out of bed while trying not to get caught by her parents. When Miranda finished tiptoeing to the front, she gathered up the microphone in both hands and her eyes closed rather than directly facing the crowd. She might not have been comfortable with public speaking, but her desire to participate seemed to outweigh that. Hi. Hi. Cove's gaze was set ahead, but you caught out the peripherals of your own gaze that your husband mouthed the high back instinctively. Thank you, Garnet and Cove, for inviting me. It's been a wonderful day, and I'm so happy for you two. The stiffness of her presentation smoothed out the more she got talking. She was even able to giggle as her uh, affectionate feelings for her friends eclipsed the worries of saying them in public. It's been great attending a party of yours after you two were always so nice to come to mine. Cove laughed alongside her with the farm war gone off days of bounce houses, noisemakers, and the pin that tail of the donkey reflected on his jubilant face. You're both amazing, and I really appreciate the support you've given me there when I needed someone to talk to. You had such a positive impact on my life. I'm just really glad to be your friend, and I hope that we'll always be friends. Congratulations, Garnet and Cove. Cove nodded firmly in silent agreement with her wish while scrubbing at his eyes. Miranda put down her mic with some oof and twirled around to return to her seat, her steps much lighter than before. Terry was there with open arms to give her a squeeze, clearly proud of his girlfriend for doing so good, and her smile stayed brightly even from a distance. Then Terry jumped onto his feet with a grin, strolling over right to the counter, scooped up the mic with one hand, and gestured ahead of him with the other. I met Cove and Garden in high school. I didn't know the longest out of them the longest out of everyone, but I could tell that they were cool people right away. Them and Randy were my best uh, group of buddies back then, and we've kept that friendship train going despite all the things that have happened. He tapped a finger against the table, uh, tabletop with every specific thing he mentioned. Graduating school, moving to different places... Me and Miranda dating, the two of them getting married, and the things about us not being what other people thought they were. Also, we lived through that one summer when it wasn't just the four of us. Sometimes it was the five of us, right, my pal Dax Baxter? He brought the mic even closer to his grinning mouth for emphasis and dramatically pointed <laughs> to the side. Now we're all here again. You probably didn't plan for that. And he was right. Having been quietly discussing the next steps with the server, Baxter's mouth hung with open mid-word. Suddenly being brought into focus outside of his expertly laid schedule knocked him completely off rhythm. Cove barked a gratified laugh, equally as shocked but far more amused. Bax's head turned into the direction of the sound and his mouth finally closed into a wry smile. It seemed Terry brought the gift of teasing someone other than you and Cove, which and it was more of a welcome affair as Cove was concerned, especially since it was taken in good spirits. There was something remarkable about being able to include Bax in your group's merrymaking the same way as anyone else. Terry nodded knowingly and casually transitioned into his main point. And I guarantee your friendship's gonna stay on track. No matter what, there's no one that could take your places. From me to you, from me to each other. Good work time to not. Your catches. Terry left his speech in the mic there. He paused to applaud your union graciously before flipping his hand out in a wave as he walked off. Cove gave a big friendly wave in return, his eyes glossy. Soon as Terry hit his chair again, Miranda took his arm and happily began whispering about the speech. 
Kyra pushed himself up from his seat and went right to the front without any hesitation. Eagerly, she lifted the mic to her lips and said, I can't believe my babies are having a wedding right now. The unexpected declaration sent chuckles rumbling through the crowd. Any hoosies. Any hoosies. Kyra continued with a wink and a smile. It was a, a treat getting to meet Garden in presence the first time. Though I already felt like I knew her, thanks to all the stories Cove loved to recount about her. In a pout whispering, Cove spoke out about the description of events. Mom, whenever I got to visit Sunset Bird, or you visited me, I came to see firsthand more and more what marvelous individuals you were growing into. You bloomed right before my eyes, like perfect white poppies on the hill where you were married. And every moment I've been able to spend with each of you have been a gift. We had some pretty wild times over the years. And I count my lucky stars that I got to be the mom to such an amazing boy. And Garden, the buoyant uh, tone of Kyra's words faded into something softer, sweeter. I'd like to thank you again for personally helping my baby make himself a home again. I'm truly grateful for that. There was a sniffling at your side after that. Cove tugged at the tablecloth in front of him unconsciously, needed to do something. Mom, congratulations, both of you. I love you. I love you, too. It didn't matter that she couldn't hear. She knew. And Kyra used the bottom of her palm to wipe her eye, placing the mic on a stand with the other hand. She took an additional moment to look up at you and Cove gently, and then Kyra strode back to the table. Cliff leaned over towards her, gave her two thumbs up for that speech. His zealousness made Kyra cover her mouth in amusement and embarrassment. And then Cliff raised out from his seat. The most contentious figure of your husband's early life who grew to become his best man. Cliff took some large strides to reach the speaker stand. But his fingers froze in place before they could grasp the mic and he looked down on it, collecting his thoughts or his emotions or both. When he was ready, his hand locked around the base of it and he lifted the mic up higher. A grin pulled across his face. There was a crinkle around the corner of his eye. Hey. Hey, sport. Hi, Garnet. Hi, Dad. Cove's reply was barely audible, and he might not have realized he'd done it, but Cove's irises were shaking as he looked ahead intently. Well. Cliff's expression turned distant. He was facing the crowd, but his gaze had drifted even further away to something in the past that was long gone. I remember the day Cove and I moved to Sunset Bird, where I, when I met Garnet. I didn't know where my boy was then, or what I was doing, or anything at all, really, as soon as you'll be able to tell. <laughs> he chuckled weakly over the self-derisive uh, comment, and didn't do much to lighten anyone's mood, including his own, and he remained wistful. I was sitting out on the curb, and Garnet strolled up the road, heading home. I knew her, or I knew of her. I met Pamela and Noelani already, talking about how Cove got away from me. Cliff shook his head, trying not to get too lost in his complicated mess of thoughts on those times. But that's not the point. Well, what matters was that I heard Garnet was their eight-year-old, the same age as my cove, and Garnet was the only one of that age in the neighborhood. In my infinite wisdom, I picked out a place that wasn't exactly a family-friendly community, it was mostly a bunch of retired vacationers. <laughs> he gritted his teeth and placed a hand to his forehead, feeling the sting of that day as if it was fresh. And speaking of, did I mention that it was the start of summer break when we moved? What was my little boy going to do now that I dragged him out there? I, I wanted to have uh, I wanted him to have someone to play with. Someone he could talk to. I, I wanted him to be happy. There was a heart-wrenching crack in Cliff's voice as he spoke about what his feelings truly had been. I just... At that t moment, everything was going wrong and it felt like a dead end no matter which way I went. And I was so sure that there wouldn't be anyone for Cove if it wasn't guarded. In one more valiant effort to try not to make the mood of your wedding too heavy, Cliff gave a goofy shrug. So, <laughs> I offered Garnet 20 bucks to be his friend. It's just funny to me. The straight line of his shoulders lowered on each side like a root sagging after years of having to stay solid. Maybe that's not the word. What I'm saying is that all my worries and regrets were at their peak and I was acting crazy and I know it now. But somehow it turned that way that there really wasn't anyone else for him. Or not anyone better for him anyway. No one in the world can be there for Cove the way she can. It's... I... The sentence remained unfinished. As much as he tried, Cliff couldn't put the words together to express what it meant to him. Cliff placed a hand on his chest as his gaze lowered to the ground. His delicate words continued to be shared with a full gathering of people thanks to the mic, but it was as Cliff was speaking only to his son. That day, such a long time ago to this point when you found out why me and Kyra divorced, she was there. 
Garnet was there when the plan was to go jet skiing when that emotional bomb dropped and she was still there. And when you felt ready to head back out to keep going, you had to turn your head to see if someone was ready to go with you. I'm so glad. You had someone who supported you in ways I never could. It was just what I had hoped for and I was so relieved. He glanced forwards once more, offering a smile directly to you. You're an amazing person, Garnet. Inhaling deeply through his nose, Cliff's stance pulled together, tall and solid. His dark blue eyes shone with a depth to them as they met with the far brighter blues of his child. Son, being with your dad will always be the best thing. Being your dad will always be the best thing I've done in my entire life. And getting that condo on that street was the luckiest card I ever drew. I bet you two would have found each other, with or without that eventually. But because of it, my kid got to grow up right next to the person who would make him happiest. I can't ask for more than that. And Garnet, you didn't need a dad with what great moms you've got, but I'm so thankful I still get to be yours. I love you both. And I'll keep loving you for the rest of the time that I've got. Tears streaked down Ko's face freely, and he didn't fight their falling. Kuro kit, yahoo, welcome to the stream. Hope you're having a goodie Sunday. I love you too. Watching you and your husband, uh, watching your husband from where he stood, Cliff got misty-eyed himself. He reached to wipe his cheeks, and completely forgetting that there was a microphone in his hand, Cliff set it down, shyly waving over to the two of you, and stepped away. He was then able to rub at the ever-growing tears. No one spoke or even moved as Cliff returned to his spot, and when he was seated, Kaya reached over to give his back a pat. He had done good. Then the mic sat there untouched, and none of the other attendees wanted to pick up after where it had been left off. That was going to be the final speech for you guests, you were certain. Kyle's breath was shaky, taking in everything. A weepy smile reappeared on his face the more it sunk in just how much he was cared for. He leaned into your shoulder, pulling at the tablecloth and burrowing his face into his shoulder. <laughs> you chuckled, feeling good. And you tucked your face into Kyle's hair. The two of you curled up together in a lopsided oval, and it might have been a little silly to try to hide away when everything in the event was pointing right to you, but you did it anyway. When a voice amplified across the whole space once more, it was unexpectedly your planner, giving his appreciation to the cooperation again and announcing the closing of the speeches. But rather than leaving the microphone on the counter, he strolled up to your table with a device in hand. Before we set this off for the night, would either of you like to give your own messages to your loved ones? Oh. Cove lifted his teary face up to acknowledge Baxter, pausing to sniffle. I, I'll do it. I'd like to say something too. Of course. Of course. Here you are. Cove used one hand to scrub his eyes and the other to accept the mic, drawing it in close. Uh, too close. His murmur crackled uncomfortably loud and Cove's arms sp uh, sprung out straight instinctively to get the noisemaker from him. He winced, much more cautiously lifting the mic towards his face, and he cradled it in both hands and his gaze dropped to the ground. Thanks. Thanks, everybody. Really, I'm seriously, I'm... His eyes closed completely as he paused to bite his lips. So glad to be here. And all those things you said were... There was a crackling strain to Cove's voice that wasn't caused by technical error. He was choking up. Each word had to be pushed out with dedicated effort. Really nice. I love you. A rapidly stuttered as it was, he meant to express it... Um, what he meant to express came through to you and the rest of the people who are deeply here. Cove's on earnest affection. In a fumbling motion that screeched out even more unintentional feedback, Cove passed the mic to you. His now free hands moved to cover his mouth. And as you rose from your chair, your eyes casting over to each individual in the crowd, you had to accept the bittersweet notion that this truly was a special occasion. Fanning, thank you for the head pass, welcome to the stream. You had no idea when everyone that you cared for would be gathered together in the next place again, or or when you'd see some of them next. You wondered if Cove had been cognizant of the same thing while he was speaking. That this message had a weight to it, that it was your last big chance to share your thoughts with them. And all you could think to say was... I'll always be grateful to get to have each of you in my life. And that brought the speeches to their last sentimental note. Your eyes remained focused ahead as you extended your hand out to Baxter to take the microphone and lower it back into your seat. Applause erupted from table to table as Baxter grinned approvingly. Perfect. Perfect. Why does he say it like a question? Perfect. Why? The fuck? When the clapping subsided, emotions remained high and further conversations were tentative and hushed for a time. 
but eventually the happy chatter that frequented your reception filled the air again. It was an evening of good food, good company. The evening continued to slip by in a dreamy haze, and before you knew it, all the attendees had finished their main courses and the dishes had been swiftly cleared from tables. And in spite of all of this, everyone remained rooted in the seats, and it was no secret that there was more to come. People were already eagerly waiting for dessert, even though none of them could make the vibrating anticipation of your husband. <laughs> it was time for cake. And before the big event, you had something else up your sleeve, and the server was a return to bestow the extra treats to your guests. Truly delightful trays of fancily placed pretzels were delivered to the tables and distributed to the guests, and dishes had been careful selectively to match your pink color scheme. There were some befuddled expressions as guests saw what was being served, but they were outshone by Cliff's enthusiasm. He was immediately taken in by the idea, even before he had been taken a bite. The service had vanished from the floor with impressive uh, efficiency, allowing the wedding cake to take center stage. Sat on a center table was your fully realized, four-tiered, beachy-style green masterpiece. You were pleased to see that your guests were as smitten with it as you and Cover, and Cliff let out a low whistle of admiration. What a cake! Terry gasped. Are you really going to do it? That cake was taken an eternity to put together. Oh... Kyra's voice rang out sweetly as he gazed Fantastic. at the cake. That's perfect. Why don't they show us the cake? I want to see this cake. It's so cool that you went with green instead of just white. Totally unpredictable. Baxter beckoned with you and Cubs to come forward. You rose from your seats as one of them crossed the floor to the display table where a waiting server was offered the cutting knife to you both. The two of you took a hold of the handle, hand in hand, so that you could make the incision as a team. Together, you hover the knife over to the lowest layer of the cake. You glanced at Cove, who smiled wryly at you, and really almost too beautiful to cut, but just as almost, your guests were waiting for their portions of the delicious cake. Carefully, so as to preserve the structure of the knife for as long as possible as you could, you pushed down with the knife. It slid through the cake easily, leaving a smooth cut all the way through. You and Cove drew the knife out, and then made another cut in order to create a neat triangle of cake. The server produced a plate, ready for the first slice. With a bit of shakiness in the motion as between the two of you, you slipped the knife under the piece and transferred it over to the waiting plate. The first slice was done. You nodded, satisfied, before reaching down to pl uh, plunge your fingers straight into the cake, the soft, spongy treat squished beneath your fingers. Cole's fingers pressed against yours as he scooped against the remaining cake from the platter into his own hand. You rubbed the cake across both his cheeks. Scooping up a chunk of cake, you brought his hands up to Cole's face. Cove screwed his eyes sh uh, sh uh, shut tight. You rubbed the cake over his cheeks as thoroughly as he was scrubbing his face, leaving a trail of crumbs and frosting everywhere. Then, with the delicate dripping of creamy confections and crumbs, he delicately caressed your cheek, leaving a trail of cake behind. The frosting was cool against your skin, while the fine crumbs of cake itself lifted as he streaked them across your cheeks. You tried to contain your giggles until he was done, not really wanting to move at the wrong time and get cake in your eye. A few rogue chuckles still escaped, and when Cole's furrowed brow relaxed into his normal expression, he brought his hand away. You finally judged it to be safe. You exploded with laughter at his novel approach to cake smashing. It really was just like him. The two of you were then both caked in cake, a towel laid out in front of a serving platter, almost certainly for the purpose of helping people, people clear up exactly after this exact scenario had played out. Cove wiped himself off with it as he laughed. Then Cove removed the towel from his face and revealed a tickled smile, and then he taken the smashing with humor and grace like an absolute champ, and he held out the towel to you. It was good that Cove was there to uh, assist. You'd been so engrossed in watching you that you completely forgot the cake was still clinging to your fingers and face. You both happily made your way back to the head table, accompanied by the cheers of your friends and family. Though you'd spend a lot of time on your feet today, each step was buoyant. When you and Cove were back in your seats, a couple of waiters smoothly placed fresh cut slices of cake before you. Cove let out a thrilled squeak as he picked up the provided for it. Each aspect of it had been painfully plan to suit the occasion as well as your taste, and at least now, it was finally there for the eating. You were looking forward to having a slice of cake, and in short order, servings of cake were set down in front of each table, a neat triangular slice in front of every guest, and the crowd dug in alongside a discussion on the dessert. Ooh, it's tasty! I love the filling! Your cousin wasn't the only one in the family who was captivated by the cake. Ma uttered a dreamy sigh after each bite. Wonderful! Delicious! Cove stopped shoveling fondant in his mouth long enough to give his own praises. <laughs> I'm really glad we went with something that had fruit. No way this could be anything but great with that kind of flavor. It's better than that. It's actually amazing. You didn't hear a single peep out of Jeremy, but whenever you spotted him while serving the scene, he was steadily working his way through the slice. Though a series of mod uh, through a series of modest bites, the cake slowly vanished from his plate. 
That, combined with the absence of any complaints, was a huge accomplishment when it came to that particular guest. You admired the cake, committing each beautiful detail to memory before you took your first bite. You closed your eyes as you let it melt on your tongue, relishing in the light and fluffy texture alongside the silky frosting. Each bite was savored until your plate was clean, and by that point, Cove was already on his second slice. By the time that the meal was officially over, Cove had not only devoured three full slices of cake, but he double-checked with Baxter about what happened to any leftovers. Baxter had needed to reassure him that any remaining sections of the cake would be wrapped up to go home with the two of you. It was pleasant to sit back and relax for a while, giving your feet time to recuperate from a long day, but the lull didn't last for long. Newly fueled by cake, the party was beginning to start again. Celebration is able to continue in earnest. Derek, Lee, and Terry and Miranda got the dance floor going. They took turns pulling silly moves and cheering each other on, and Liz sung to all the songs that she knew from whatever an old favorite of your life growing up together came on. The four parents made their table base camp and cycled between catching up with the, one another and family in town and rejoining with one another. They spent as much time training sentimental stories about when their babies were just babies. Carl's one uncle showed his classical magic tricks to celebrate the day. Your husband was far more enthusiastic about the stunts as a 23-year-old than as an 8-year-old. And when he got the chance, Cove graciously offered Jeremy some of the leftover cake after how eagerly Jeremy had eaten his first slice. They truly were close for him to do that, and Jeremy accepted the kindness for a change. During the entire time, more casual photos were snapped of the best, funniest moments. One was when Miranda got Terry to hold up her dress so that she could do a handstand, and you couldn't wait to see them fully developed. And many guests had been generous enough to bring presents that you and Cove might need. You'd finished opening each time and offering your thanks. Seafoam green towels, dishes, water purifier, framed picture of the sea with the word life's a beach <laughs> were some of your takeaways for the day. The most common gift, though, however, was the safe bet of just simply giving some cash. You never seen so many $20 bills in one place. Your family certainly had a sense of humor. <laughs> of course, the relationship that began with someone offering money would reach uh, its head with that repeating. Your husband caught a glimpse of that silent amusement in your face, and his mouth curved into a smile as he watched you. You'd bet money that he knew exactly what was on your mind. Good evening. This distinct, polite voice of your planner caught your attention. You approached with a polite you way. You know. The people that you know are as welcome as you are. They've treated the staff, including myself, well throughout the whole reception. <laughs> uh, well, with one exception. Mr. Jeremy's something of a character, but don't worry. We can handle a little bit of snark just fine. The description made Cove wheeze, and he couldn't meet Ga Baxter's ga gaze when replying. Sorry. Sorry, he's, uh, kind of got an attitude. I've noticed. As pleasant as he kept the pleasantries, Baxter was certain to get the point of the conversation quickly. Well. Well, I'm here more to say that you've got the space open for a few more hours. But there are no more planned events or responsibilities on your shoulders. So the day went off exactly as intended. He pressed his hand against the bottom of his spine and let his torso back against him to stretch. For a single side word, Baxter let himself clock out of the work mindset. Hallelujah. But the metaphorical bell rang and he returned promptly to providing a service, standing up perfectly straight and pointing his toes forward. You're free to simply enjoy yourselves however you want with the time that's left. Of course, I'll personally put out any fires if they do appear. You two don't need to worry about anything. Um. Cool. Um, thanks for you for all of this. You really were the perfect guy to do it. Baxter's brows curved, his eyebrows softened, and even pausing to steady himself didn't hide the emotion rich in his voice. That <clears throat> means a lot to me. It was really wonderful putting all of this together with you. The smile already prominent on his face warmed further. Baxter ran a hand down his shirt, smoothing it in a casual, fluid motion. You're welcome. You're very welcome. It's been a joy working with you two. Truly. The mood was light all around until the feeling really hit Cove. He shifted into place uncomfortably, not exactly knowing how to proceed from that point when it was finished. So, does that mean we're friends? Oh. He blinked rapidly as his mouth closed into a tight line before a saying a full thought. Baxter always needed a second to recover from the rare occasion that something knocked him off his game. In a flash of memories, you were transported to your childhood bedroom, eight years old, your first sleepover with my husband. In the tiny, dainty voice that he used to have, Covet asked clear, uh, nearly the same question to you then, if you were friends. Sweet and unsure, he'd always been the man you loved and always would be. It's... Well, that's... <laughs> your call, I'd say. Despite the prompting to talk, Cove could have put together an answer. He 
You gave Cove a confirming nod. Two pairs of eyes from very two different men set on you, even though eventually moving back to look at one another again. Smiles returned to both their features, and as Baxter said, Baxter would say, it was settled. To solidify the friendship, opened his arms out to you for a hug. You gladly reciprocated. You tucked your arms around his chest in a nice affectionate embrace, then he wrapped his arms around your back in return before letting go of you again. Next, his hand went towards Cove, and he held it out evenly with confidence, not uh, not from a want to be self-assured, but was actually certain that they had a closer relationship now. Cove looked down at it, considering, but ultimately raised his arms and shoulders in, in a motion that was both an awkward shrug and an invitation to hug instead. The lopsided grin he gave was contagious, and Baxter took hold of Cove while positively beaming. Baxter was only tall enough to bring his chin to Cove's shoulder, but he rested it there comfortably. Cove chuckled in amusement, and it was a long time, but he had finally been won over to Baxter's side. He gave his new friends a pat on the back before they ended the embrace amicably. I hope you enjoy your post-wedding bliss as long as you can. But when life settles back to normal, we should have dinner. I know some good places. I guess. Uh, that'd be nice. I guess we'll call you. Definitely. Definitely. We'd love to get together again. Perfect. Perfect. And congratulations on your lovely day. He then quite literally bowed out, tipping one foot back and inkling forward. He kept his head lifted with that curled grin that you'd become so used to featured prominently on his face. Baxter left the two of you there, disappearing to the crowd of figures in all in black to help keep the event running as smoothly as possible. Who thought back to the very first start of that day? When Baxter promised he'd congratulate you when it was all over, that gave his parting words an extra sense of finality. But it wouldn't really be a real goodbye. Uh, this time, Baxter would be a part of your lives for as long as he was welcome in it. You believe in that. And with the staff busy, the guests mingling with each other, you and Cove had a moment completely to yourselves since the wedding first began that morning. You knew for certain that you could relax when you caught Cove pulling into a big stretch. His torso twisted to one side as his hands rose up as high as he could get them. He had to fight a little against the crisp, fitted shirt that he was buttoned into, but Cove was persistent. His eyes had been closed when he worked out the last of the jitters he carried throughout the day, and his gaze landed on you as soon as he finished. There was a radiant warmth in his expression as he spoke to you with an eased heart. If you don't mind, I want to dance again with you before it's over. Of course, Cove. He smiled openly and welcomely, and was more inviting than his direct words had been. He had in the past, and you were certain that he'd do in the future, and Cove lifted his hands for you to take. You accepted, as then, as you always would. You and your husband slipped away from the main seating area to the center of the space, and by that late hour, the dance floor had mostly empty. Your fingers remained linked when both of you took hold of one of another in a few seconds, taking form for a dance. Cove brought his chest enough to you to brush against yours, and rested his cheek against the edge of your forehead. He was careful to not mess up your hair. Slow, calming music drifted through the air and enveloped you as it kept out the buzz of distant conversation still happening. You began to sway to the sound, cozy, content, and it felt as if though you and he were in your own world. So... Well, Mrs. Holden, congratulations on your successful wedding. Again. He slipped past the last word in a playful laugh. Congratulations to you, Mr. Holden. Thanks. Thanks. And if you're wondering, my plan is to be the last person who gets to congratulate you tonight. He waggled his wiggly eyebrows, being intentionally silly. <laughs> you giggled. He was adorable. He sighed softly, his shoulders lowered comfortably, but Cove suddenly perked back up to attention when something struck him. Though, I could say it again when we got to the hotel room. I'd definitely be the last person to do it then. <laughs> That's one of the perks of being married. I pretty much get to always be the first and the final with you. For me, too. I'm good with that. There's no one else I'd want to be my first and last for everything. Thank you. In his glistening eyes, you could see how treasured you really were, and Cove whispered heartfelt words. See you tomorrow. Oh, and I also get to say this for sure. See you tomorrow, Garner. I'll see you tomorrow, too. Cove pressed himself into you even more snugly, letting out a tiny thrilled squeak. So, did you notice I'm wearing an anklet? He let out a genuine gasp. No! Seriously? Are you seriously? I, I had no idea you were wearing one. Uh, with the initial shock wearing off, Ko shamelessly craned his neck to try to get a peek at it, and you could only laugh at the reaction. Honestly, I thought you would have checked for well... that. Well... <laughs> well... Ko dropped his face completely, feeling suddenly bashful. You really do look great in the outfit, but mostly I just wanted to see your face. 
I haven't been able to focus on much else today. Sorry. Oh, that's so sweet. You were swooning, and Ko still had a knack for the unexpected compliment. Uh, I wanted to mention how you looked. His stance tense, blushing in his finery. Spotlight had turned back on, and Ko was getting stage fright. Do you like it? Ko do be a footman, but he doesn't let me distract you from the wedding. <laughs> it's flawless. Perfection. Unbelievable. Glamorous. Elegant, magnificent, delectable. Ah! Guard it! It matches all the good adjectives in the thesaurus. You could tell from his bluff that he had ultimately enjoyed your attention, and his posture relaxed as he seemed more confident in his clothes again. Thanks. I like yours too. I was completely speechless when I saw it. Thank you. Is there anything you're hoping in our lives after hmm. this? Well, we've got our place, our pets, each other. That makes me really happy. There is something, if that's something you want to talk about, I want to listen. Uh, I was wondering if we could talk about maybe starting a family. You felt the pounding in your ears and breathing began more rapidly. I'd like to give birth. For a second, you completely stalled and you winced as you saw it potentially fading and became a real possibility once more. Actually, I'd like to give birth and adopt. I'm an adopted child. I want to. I want to give. I want to give people. I want to make people happy too. Instead of falling, he spoke. Okay. The word was so quiet, and you needed to hear him so much. You instinctively pulled him closer to you, and you regretted that choice immediately after because you affirmed yourself with a shout. Right. We can get babies. Uh, n not right now. I mean, uh, unless you want to do it right now. <laughs> Ko was panicking, bouncing up and down on his feet enough to shake both of your bodies. You knew his heart was in the right place, though. It filled you with joy. Don't worry, we'll take our time. He panted out uneven breaths, but calmed down enough to still himself. Y yeah. Good idea. Thanks, Garden. Thank you, too. You let yourself quietly enjoy his company. And you buried your face into his chest, settled in comfortably, wishing you could stay there right forever. Lovingly, he struck the back of your, uh, struck your back with the tips of his fingers, and it was warm. But then you heard your husband sigh whisper. It all went by so fast. And now that I'm thinking about it, I don't mean the wedding, it's just everything. Where did the years go? When did you and I become so grown up? Hmm. I think it happened a long time ago. We just didn't really notice. Maybe you're right. Though, his spirits carefully rose again as he spoke more lightly. <laughs> I did feel pretty good about getting older, not being a kid anymore, because I'm doing it with you. Before, we could only pretend to play adult, and I was bad at it. Liz was right on that one, unfortunately. And now we're at a wedding, and I suppose it's like... I know what it's like to be an adult, kind of. You just do it and keep going. That's as simple as that. I wish I could have figured out everything from the beginning. But no, actually, I'm, I'm kind of glad everything went the way it did. <laughs> I am too. The song that blanketed over your discussion was in his final chorus as guests were saying their goodbyes to one another. It was almost time to go. Too soon you would know what the ending note of your wedding was, and that final glance, the last word. Those thoughts swirled in your mind until Ko brought you back to existing in the present where you belong. It's nice. I think our life is really nice. Not letting either of you get lost in contemplation again, Ko suddenly clapped both of his hands against your shoulders with the utmost seriousness. You know, if you ever want to have another party like this, I'll do it. It can be every year, multiple times a year, whenever, whenever you feel like it. We'll keep Baxter in business forever. <laughs> if it's with you, I'm up for anything. Tiny, delicate water drops pooled in the corner of his eyes. Cove let his hands travel from your shoulders to touch your face, and he cradled your tent nearly, never wanting to let go. What did I ever do to get with someone who's been there for me? Someone who honestly cares about me? I don't really need an answer. I'm just really grateful. I love you. I love you, Garnet. Always. A. Hey. Wait. It just it just ends abruptly like that. That was a. That was a hard swivel. <laughs> Uh, all right. I'm happy. Ah, uh, nice, comfy, 
vibey Sunday. Yeah, I expected like an end screen, but there was just nothing. That was kind of fucky, but um. <sighs> Still good. And Deluxe Burks, thank you for stopping by. I hope you enjoyed. Congratulations on reaching the ending. He, I, 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 I really enjoyed this whole journey. Our life was, it was good. Um, they've got a sequel game, which the demo's out, which is apparently Act One, which is the the childhood phase, and I'm very curious about that one too. Uh, but as it is currently, this was this was good. It was happy. Eternal wait for the second one begins. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's which is which is fine. I don't think that's too much of an issue. I think next Sunday we'll try the demo out, and that'll be cool. But um, it's a Sunday, which is a short stream day. Um, so we're just gonna call it here. Thank you guys all so much for stopping by. I hope you guys enjoyed. Mwah. Thanks for the stream cross. It was fun watching this, and always good to hear you do more voice acting. Yeah, it was a lot of fun. It was it was genuinely a lot of fun. Um. I especially like try to make sure we impart emotions into stuff like Cliff trying not to fucking cry and shit. <laughs> uh, it's, 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 it's a good time. But yeah, all of you guys take care. Have an amazing rest of your Sunday. Remember the fat boy loves you. Bye. Ba 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 Have an amazing Sunday. Really, make sure you get some proper rest. Tomorrow's Monday. For a lot of you guys, it's the start of the week. Uh, for some of you guys, it might already be Monday, technically. So make sure you take care of yourselves. I love you.